ยานประวัติศาสตร์พิมายจากประวานพลังแห่งสภาต่อศาสนาและบารมีอันยิ่งใหญ่ของผู้สร้างลานพรหมทัตตำนานความรักนิรันเสน่ห์ชุมชนเล็กๆแต่ยิ่งใหญ่ด้วยมิตรไมตรีขอต้อนรับท่านผู้มีเกียรติทุกท่านเข้าสู่การแข่งขันไทยไฟค่าเชื่อพี่ใหม่พบกับสองผู้ดำเนินรายการเป็กเรมนัทสุวรรณานนท์และโคชจิบอัติการหนุนพักดีสวัสดีครับผมเป็กเปรมนัทสุวรรณานนท์ครับผมโคจิบอดิการหนุนพักดีนะครับขอต้อนรับทุกท่านที่กําลังรับชมผ่านทางช่อง8หรือกําลังรับชมผ่านการไลฟ์สดนะครับทาง YouTube ช่องไทยไฟออฟฟิเชียลเข้าสู่การแข่งขันไทยไฟค่าเชือกพิมายครับณลานพรหมทัศน์อำเภอพิมายจังหวัดนครราชสีมาครับผมใช่ไหนๆนะครับตอนนี้เราอยู่ที่อำเภอพิมายนะครับขอเสียงชาวพิมายหน่อยเลยเอาละฮะเสียงดังกึกก้องไปทั่วประเทศนะที่รับชมทางช่อง8แล้วนะครับและตอนนี้เราอยู่ที่ไหนครับเป็นจิ๊บครับที่นี่ครับคุณเป๊กครับน่าสนใจมากคือเมนพรหมทัศน์ครับเป็นเจดีย์ก่ออิฐขนาดใหญ่ถูกสร้างขึ้นในสมัยกรุงศรีอยุธยาตอนตอนปลายนะครับตั้งอยู่ใกล้กับอุทยานประวัติศาสตร์พิมายและมีความเชื่อในตำนานว่านะครับเป็นสถานที่ถวายเพลิงพระศพเท้าพรหมทัศน์ครับผู้ครองเมืองพิมายซึ่งเมนพรหมทัศน์เนี่ยเป็นหนึ่งในบริสถานอันทรงคุณค่าของชาวพิมายครับอ่าซึ่งตอนนี้เรามาอยู่ที่ตรงนี้นะครับสำหรับสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์นะครับแต่อีกหนึ่งเรื่องเนี่ยที่อยากจะบอกทุกคนนะครับทั่วประเทศเลยนะฮะว่าพิมายมีความสําคัญอย่างไรและความภาคภูมิใจของคนพิมายนะครับจะรู้สึกอยู่ในหัวใจของทุกคนนะฮะนั่นคือสถานที่นี้ครับเป็นสถานที่แห่งความทรงจำนะฮะแล้วก็สร้างความปราบปลื้มให้กับชาวพิมายนะฮะในเมื่อวันที่1นถึงสพฤศจิกายนนะครับในพุทธศักราช2498เลยนะครับเพื่อไม่ให้เป็นการเสียเวลานะครับมวยของเราได้พร้อมที่จะอุ่นเครื่องความมันให้กับชาวพิมายโดยนักมวยจากมุมขาวไวท์คอร์เนอร์นะครับนักมวยผู้นี้เข้ามาจากประเทศทูเคียขอเสียงต้อนรับนักรบแห่งทูเคียเดนิสโรดแมนบายรอดเดนิสโรเมนบายรอดนักรบแห่งทูเคียประเทศทูเคียและนะครับลูกหลานของพี่น้องชาวพิมายนะครับจากพิมายจังหวัดโคราชนะครับขอเสียงดังๆต้อนรับจอมบูเมืองพิมายแสนศักดิ์พิมายพงศธรแสนศักดิ์พิมายพงศธรจอมบูเมืองพิมายประเทศไทย
Hello. Okay, it is bright and sunny here in Pimai. A beautiful, hot evening in a beautiful place here in the northeastern part of Thailand. It's a bonus bout. We haven't done this for a while. Introducing first in the white corner, Dennis Romed Bayram, 21 years of age from Adana in Turkey. He stands at 185 centimeters and has a professional record of 29 fights, 20 victories, nine losses with zero draws. You're just joining us. This is the big tie fight as they are now known. And we are coming to you live Hopefully, on the Tie Fight International YouTube channel. I haven't checked yet, but there is the man in the black corner, Kevin. That is right. He is the hometown boy. He goes by the name of Sansak Pimai Pongsakorn. His real name is Sansak Chaisi Ram. 24 years of age, 178 centimeters tall. Originally born in Buriram province, but he grew up most of his life in Pimai, right here in the Konrachisima province. And he currently lives here as well. He's had a total of 62 fights, 41 victories, 17 losses, and 4 draws. Yeah, so that's right. We we'll usually start around 6 o'clock with the first fights being around 6.30 here. Thai time, of course. But like I said, we've got this bonus bout for you. All the loyal fans on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel. That's right, but we had to get the hometown boy in, right? Exactly, indeed. And there you can see the fighters for this first part of the evening. 73 kilograms we have got in the white corner, Dennis Romed Bayram. And in the black corner, it is Sansak Pimai Pong Saton. Referee in charge is Sutnet Sak Shu. Judge ring side, Tuan Ingobon. Pajak Ngao Ngam and Yong Yut Apaiso. And it is. Absolutely boiling here. I mean, people keep telling me that, look, the more north from Bangkok you go, the more cooler it gets. That was a lie, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, good left hook there from Dennis. Yeah. Right knee, attempted flip it looked like as well there from the Turk. Big elbows attempted by Sensuk. Woo! Fire in the ring right now. Another left hook, and again. Oh, and down goes Sensuk. And down he goes for a second time. Referee a little bit slow to act. What a fight we have already, I mean. Unbelievable. The action in the ring is hot as the weather outside it. Straight from the get-go, I mean, Dennis, immediately, he says he deserves to be on the televised bouts. He doesn't want to be on the televised bouts. He wants to be on television. Oh. And what an excellent sweep there from Sansa. Dennis trying to make a point then right here against the hometown hero. The fans trying to get behind him. The question is, Kevin, and you ask the perfect question every week, has he bought card Chirk before? I don't think neither have, but by the looks of it, good knees to the midsection there from Dennis. Dennis trying to take control of the glitch. Dennis, I mean, from the get-go, extremely aggressive, trying to get the job done early. Dennis, the menace, Romed by Ram into the white corner. Looking for a spin back elbow there, I think. That's not his actual nickname, by the way, ladies oh. and gentlemen. But it's now another left hook there by the spinning Dennis. Tell you what though, with this weather, I know it's only the first round, but oh my goodness. Oh, another big right hand there from Dennis, and again! Nose might be busted open already on the face of Sensuk. Both of them trading blows like there is no tomorrow. You've got to love matches like this. Well, we've got to zoom up. On again! Oh, the slam, Dennis is down! And the referee immediately gives the count. Both of them yeah. have scored a count each. And Dennis is on wobbly leg. I mean, he doesn't look good right now at all. Absolutely. He wants to keep the fight going, though. Sensuk moving forward already. Got to give it Dennis time to breathe right now. Doing the right thing. Is this the beginning of the end? It could well possibly be. I mean, Dennis, he looks like he's on borrowed time right now. He looks tired. He came in really strong, really aggressive. But at the moment, he is on the back foot and fighting for survival. Oh, looking the engine. Looking for that big right hand, but there's no speed, no trajectory behind it. And no power. I mean, that was the key thing that knocked Sansak down in the first place. He's looking goose right now. He's looking beat. And he's boiling. Surf right here in PY. Sansak again. 
flip the script, script here. Yeah, and he's done, oh, Dennis is, looks like he's done. He barely breathe and sense it once again, tries to smother him. And, oh, a very entertaining round one here on Thai Fight P. Mai. coming back into that fight, finding a knockdown of his own. And in the end, it looked like he was going to end the night early for Dennis Bayram. But as it is, we are now moving into round number two. And there is Sen Sak, who did a tremendous job after that knockdown in round number one. And now you've got to wonder, is there any power left for Dennis? I mean, we didn't see it in the first round, but we both know what can happen in between rounds. Be interesting to see if uh, there is any energy left in the tank for Denis Romed by Ram because by the end of round number one, it looked like he was done. Gotta go for that. Yeah, nice Powerful combo. low kick, but we both know if he hit air, it yeah. gets a little bit more tiring. Question mark kick, right kick to the body, left hook. That connected. Sensor did well to stand his feet. Big elbow attempt there by Sensor. Going into that right hand, ignoring the referee. And almost stepping <laughs> out of the ring into the audiences. He wants to win by knockout, there's no doubt about it. Sensak now pushing forward once again. Oh, and that's a big it. left hand. Sensak holding on. He's oh. like Dennis again on wobbly legs. I think it's just from pure exhaustion. I mean, it uh, is boiling right it is. now. It really is. You see the audiences, they've got fans of the... Yeah. A knee to the middle, oh. that's the number on Dennis. When there's a fighter who's extremely tired, the main thing to go for is the midsection. 100%, how many times do we say that here on Tide Fight? You cannot find the head going to the body, the effects of those ropes going downstairs can be devastating. Both fighters looking a little bit tired right now, Kevin. I'll tell you what, it's all about who has enough left in the tank at the end of this, this bout. Because so far, it's looking like none of them have a lot left. I feel like they're just uh, taking the time. I can understand. Trying to fill up that energy bar. Exactly, they got to stand at Dennis. And he's trying to adapt to the PMI weather. But the hot time boy, Sansak, hey. he lives here. Oh my goodness, Dennis oh, he's got, absolutely oh exhausted. Day. But he's still fighting. What a warrior. Indeed. He's gonna look for one big left or right hand, and I feel like that's all he has left now. Sensak, take this time, sticking to the body off the back foot. This is how I feel after one minute of uh, pad, pad work. <laughs> a little bit of a stalemate right now in round number two. Just from pure exhaustion, going for the spinning back elbow, and I don't know what Sensak was going for there. <laughs> He's getting mixed up with his foot. Oh my very goodness. slow to get onto yeah. his feet. Barely get back to his feet. The crowd urging on Sensak to try and finish this fight as he delivers a 
another knee to the body. End of round number two here on Thai Fight PMI. Took his time to get back into his feet after that. Really did. All right. But I don't think it's legal either. No, it won't count with the judges. Third and final round. I'm sure Dennis is relieved. Wow. Remember, in round number one, each fighter scoring a knockdown, but indeed Sensak doing the better of the two. Round number two, pretty much all Sensak after that initial left hook by Dennis. I mean, it's fair to say both of them are in tremendous shape. How could you not be exhausted in a weather, in a weather like this? Sitting down here, 10 minutes ago, a few minutes ago. Oh, my God. That's right. You feel them in the ring right now. The last thing you want now is spicy noodles. And unfortunately, that's what me and Aaron had. You have to play with the boss for that one. <laughs> Dennis showing that he still has a bit left of the tank, and that's exactly what Sansak needs to show right now. Oh, back to the center of the ring. Still fight, I think this fight is winnable for both these fighters, of course, and Sensak, he's on top right now. But you Dennis has shown that he has the power in round number one. Sensak is someone who's actually used to fighting five rounds. He's already gone in this, this third round, just goes to show the humidity and how bad it is. Yeah. Another look in there by Sensak. Steps in right hand there. Uh, I believe it's Dennis who needs to be the one moving forward right now because unofficially on my scorecards, I gave I gave Sensak the second and the first round. Agreed. Don't see how you could have scored it any other way. Left hook once again there by Dennis. He, doesn't, he just doesn't have the energy to then push forward. Now you can tell he's really trying. Flash ahead that time almost. But I feel like both these fighters are waiting for that bell, if I'm being honest right now. Yeah, I have to agree with you in that one as well. Low kick by Dennis. Dennis coming forward once again. Deep by Sansak. Dennis going to the head, going to the legs. Gets taken down. Sansak got his hands by, down by his side on a, a few occasions actually. Dennis on wobbly legs once again. Don't think we'll see much more action oh. as the fight comes to an end pretty soon. Sun's starting to go down now, which is a blessing for the fighters who are going to be fighting in around an hour's time. But there you have it, bonus part here on Thai Fight P5 concludes. We will go to the judges' scorecard. Well, it started an entertaining bout. In the end, well, I'm surprised Dennis can run to the corner. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Entertaining the crowd here, packed crowd. The venue here, let's 
have a look at the highlights from the fight. There's a quick turnaround there from Dennis <laughs> as he received a kick to the midsection. Not I mean, one can, of the best can, highlights we've witnessed here on Thai Fight. You can see what he's going for, but you know, sometimes the body doesn't do what the brain tells you to do. Without a doubt, especially in this seat as well. Absolutely. All right, we will get the official decision for our MCs in the ring, and then in about one hour's time, from ทายแลนด์นะครับแมนลูกหลานชาวพี่ไม้นะครับอ่านะครับชนะไปอย่างสนุกสนานนะครับเออโอเคครับเก็บเสียงเชียร์ไว้ก่อนนะครับเพราะ
His real name is Tawisa Kalauram. 22 years of age, 174 centimeters tall, from right here in Pimai, Nakhon, Rajasima province. He has a total of 52 fights, 40 victories, and 12 losses. Now we've seen Peta Wichai on Thai Fight League before. Now usually, you have to have a lot of success on Thai yeah. Fight League in order to compete on the big Thai fight. But look, we like to bring back hometown boys into their hometowns. Yeah, indeed. He's gotten that call, hasn't he? Not far to travel for him. All right, boys and girls, this is the first bout of a schedule nine bout this evening on the main card here in Thai Fight. Pete Mai in the white corner from Morocco. We have got Ayub Nori. And in the black corner, we have Pet Tawi Chai, or Chai Wat. And the referee in charge of this match is referee Somsak, Janat Sung Nern. And judges ringside are Pukit Ramprayun, Si Prat Chumsuk, and Yong Yut Apai So. The main card tonight, if you don't know, we have got Sen Chai returning for the second time this month here on Thai Fight. Yeah, Sanchai says he likes to keep busy. That's exactly what we're doing for him here tonight. So, both these fighters, like I said, have fought on Thai Fight League before. Massive opportunities, though, for both of these guys right now. Nice right kick to the midsection there by Tawi Chai. Hey, Tawi Chai. Hey, Tawi Chai now has his opponent cornered. He wants to go inside the clinch. Opponent may be a little bit too strong, but he may be better in the technical area of it. Oh, nice right looking there by the Thai. And again, as Ayub Nori steps forward. And again! Yeah, great low kick from Petsu Chai. He's nice. quite on the back foot, but he's the more accurate fighter at the moment. He is, and he's connecting every time he throws. Speaking of connecting, big right hand there from Ayub Nori. Giving something for Petsu Chai to think about at least. Yeah, Ayub Nori's going to be filled with confidence right now because he knows he can hurt his opponent with those hands. Good knee to the midsection there. Return from Ayub Nori. Yeah, Pet Tawi Chai keeps getting cornered. Oh, again! Going to that left leg of the Moroccan. Yeah, you can really tell what styles they're bringing into this match. Yes. Pet Tawi Chai is much more the kicker. He's going to want to move back, create some space, and throw that right kick. Ayub, on the other hand, he wants to get close and throw those hands. I mean, those hands are like bobs. Yeah, it's a perfect fight right now. We've got one fighter happy to fight off the back foot, the counter kicker like Kevin was talking about, and then we've got the aggressive puncher in Ayu. Big right hand there from Pet Tawichai, but once again combines it with that low kick. Oh, tempted elbow there by Ayu Nori. And I'll tell you what, it is oh. tiring fighting on the back foot. You have to move back, try to create angles, and you have to defend your opponent's attacks at the same time. It's very difficult. I'd say more difficult than being the one moving forward. Yeah. 100%. Oh, Loki is coming in by Pet Tawichai. Doesn't seem to be bothering Ayub Nori too much at the moment. But you know what it is, Aaron. If you don't start blocking those low kicks, yeah. you're going to pay the price for it. Later. Oh, big hand there from Ayub Nori. Knocking back. Pet Tawichai. Oh, inside kick. Might have been a little bit low. It was low but legal, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Some apologies. Referee not having that. Despite the fact it being actually legal. Low kick there, thrown from Pinto Wichai. I don't know why, but sometimes the voice is quite like twice. When the low kicks is trying to hurt, when the opponent starts to try and throw low kicks of their own. Yeah. I and mean, I'm seeing that now from Ayub Nori. He's going to the legs. Yeah, he's saying, well, I'm hurt over there, so I can hurt you yeah. just the same way. End of a fast and furious round one here on time.
round, we had one guy moving forward and another fighter on the back foot trying to throw kicks. Yeah, beautiful strike there quick by both fighters indeed. This fight on a nice pace to it. And of course, styles make fights as they say. You can see that Pek Tawi Chai happy to fight off the back foot and doing that, throwing that right low kick to the outside thigh of Ayub Nori. He was constantly on the front foot like you were talking about, Kevin, looking for big hand strikes throughout that first round. Both fighters looking fresh as we move into round number two. Stay with us, of course. Coming up, we do have Sen Chai, the legend in the main event here tonight. My and ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, we are in Pimai, Nakhon province for the very first time for Thai Fight Pimai. And here we go into round number two. Good kick to the body there. Outside kick, right hand to the body. Tell you what, great technique here by Pen Tawi Chai. Oh, big left hook, don't count out Ayub Nori just yet. I don't know what happened during the break, but something really woke Pen Tawi Chai up. Back again to the legs. Pen Tawi Chai on the back foot, oh, counter there for Pen yeah. Chai. His timing's on point here tonight, is Pen Tawi Chai. But Ayub Nori, very, very tough. If one of those big left or right hand connects, you never know. With those wrong hands. I'm afraid to say, just like what we saw for the bonus fight, and you might be getting tired right now. Again, to the body. Oh, right hand there! Oh, and he's down, he's hurt! Problems! After all that work with those kicks going to the legs, it's all over from one big right hand! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got Taiwan, the whole town hero, does it in round number two here on Thai Fai! That is it. The hometown boy gets a victory on the big tie fight. It looked like a pretty innocuous right hand. We'll have to see what actually happened. Not sure if he's confused, Days. When he took it round number one, I was surprised. But there it is. One big, massive right hand. I mean, it is possible that it was already a previous injury or something that was prob uh, that was troubling at you, but... Well, he, he's telling the doctors right now, he's pointing to the eye, so it might be a problem with the eye, because that connected very well. Hopefully it's not um, a broken orbital or something nasty like that, but yeah, you have to give it to Pet Tawi Chai. I'm going to tell you what, anything can happen when those Kachuk ropes are tied around your hands, I mean, it is absolutely dangerous, but worked out very well. The finish! Pet to his high, Da Taiwan from Thailand! And on, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. สำหรับคู่แรกนะครับยก2นะครับผมเอาละครับแน่นอนว่าความมันเกิดขึ้นต่อเนื่องแน่นอนนะฮะในไทยไฟก็เชิญพี่ใหม่วันนี้ตอนนี้เดี๋ยวพักกันสักครู่ครับเอาละครับสำหรับคู่ต่อไปนี้นะครับจะพบกันในน้ำหนักพิกัด67กิโลกรัมครับยอดมวยหนุ่มจากอิหร่านผู้มีความห้าวเกินพิกัดครับขอเสียงต้อนรับ Fighter from Persia b a s i m a s r e a w i b a s i m a s r e a w i Fighter of Persia ประเทศอิหร่านเ
าละมาแล้วนะครับแน่นอนสำหรับคู่ต่อสู้คู่ที่ปะทะกันเนี่ยนะครับไม่ว่าคู่ต่อสู้จะยิ่งใหญ่แข็งแรงมาจากไหนแต่ถ้าหัวใจเขาเป็นคนพิมพ์หายและเขาต่ออยู่ที่ตรงนี้เขาจะไม่กลัวใครครับ,รบเพราะนี่คือมวยหนุ่มสายเลือดพิมพ์หมเหมือนกันและเป็นเหลนของโคตรมวยยักษ์สุกด้วยโอ้โหขิงสตอรี่มันมีตำนานสตอรี่มันมีตำนานไม่รู้ว่าเสียงชาวพิมพ์หมจะส่งเสียงดังขนาดไหนสำหรับยกนี้นะขอเสียงต้อนรับยักษ์เล็กมือพิมพ์หมายปูสารพระสารหินพิมพ์ปูศาสตร์ประสาทหินพี่หมายยักษ์เล็กเมืองพี่หมายประเทศไทยWe are moving on to our second bout of the evening here on Thai Fight B Mai, and it is an international super fight at 67 kilograms. We've got Thailand taking on Iran. Great fight to kick things off here tonight. Hope Ayub Nuri is okay. Looked like he had a problem with his eye. So this one, a little bit of flavour added. A little bit of spice we will explain. In the meantime, let me introduce in the white corner, Bashir Mezriavi, 18 years of age from Avaz in Iran, standing at 174 centimeters. He has a professional record of 28 fights, 19 victories with nine losses and zero draws. Do you like that Moncon? Yeah, fantastic. Now introducing the great grandson of the legendary Suk Prasad Hin Pimai. He goes by the name of Busan Prasad Hin Pimai. His real name is Chirayu Prasad Hin Pimai. 21 years of age, 183 centimeters tall, from right here in Pimai, Nokon Rajasima province. He has a total of 79 fights, 60 victories, 17 losses, and two draws. Yeah, so Kevin was. We're just delving into a little bit of history right now. So, a famous Muay Thai fighter from back in the 40s, I believe. 40s and 50s. He, yep. really, he really picked up in the 50s. That's when he made, really made a name for himself. So, I can be my. And he's got a statue here around this area. Kevin and I were looking to uh, perhaps take a picture with it earlier today, but unfortunately, we couldn't find it. Yeah, I didn't have time, unfortunately, as well. Um, but yeah, there's actually a cool photo of Sok Pasad Hinpi Mai in his old age, yeah. sitting right next to his own statue. Yeah, he died uh, in the year 2000 at the age of 91. And indeed, his grandson actually boxed for Thailand. And in 2002, in the Asian Games, got a silver medalist. And that lo location of those games was Busan. That's right. And that's why you are seeing the name Busan Prasatin Pete Mai in this event. So, with his great-grandfather's statue and that name. And his hometown. In his hometown. No pressure, kid. No pressure, <laughs> pressure for Busan as he takes on Bashir here in our second bout of the main card. If you're watching around the world on the Thai Fight League International YouTube channel, we really appreciate all the comments coming in. Coming in. Please do keep them coming throughout tonight. Kevin and I will do our best to explain what's going on in the ring. And of course, if there's any extra information, we'll be Happy to answer. That is right. Here we go. Round number one. Oh! Big spinning left hand there by Bashir. Yeah, think about the Iranian 
Boy TIE Fighters. I mean, in the beginning when they first came, the level wasn't really up to par, but nowadays, I mean, they are producing some of the greatest Boy TIE Fighters in the modern era. Yeah, we've seen Boost now a couple of times here on TIE Fight, including a big TIE Fight as well. Mixed results so far for Busan. But as you can see, the management, due to the fact that I mean, his history is incredible, of course, the heritage. What an upkick there by Busan. That off the point tie. A great look as well, potentially marketable, but it doesn't matter if you lose, of course. You've got to put on the performance. He's only second to Aaron series so bad, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right, high kick there from Bashir. He has no pressure whatsoever right now on his shoulders. Inside kick by Busan. That's it, right hand coming in by Bashir. At the moment, though, Ooh. Busan very calm, very steady. You gotta wonder if there's any nerves right now. Not the nerves because it's a boy type fight. I mean, I think he's overcome those nerves, but the nerves are in his hometown, Absolutely. in front of his own family. Oh, big that card! Left hand from out of nowhere by Busan, and it looks like it's all over. And it's a win in the very first round for Busan. Rasat hit Pimai. The legend continues. How about that? I mean, it was up to him to put on a performance here tonight. And a raging left hand by the southpaw. Again to the eye by two Bashir. And a first round knockout for Busan. Here, not far, where his grandfather or great grandfather's statue, sorry. Have a look at that left hand once again. Oh, perfectly timed, perfectly executed. I'm As sure he learned the boxing from his father. I was just about to say exactly the same thing. Stunning left hand there. Bashir not expecting it, couldn't take it. Power was just too much and down he went. Oh, knocking the head back. Whew. How many more eyes are we going to take this tonight? <laughs> Let's find out. All right, boys and girls, well, there you have it. It's short but sweet. Congratulations to Busan. We'll be moving on to our next bout of the evening shortly. The return of Nongo Chahapayak here on Thai. โอเคนะครับแน่นอนครับว่าตอนนี้นะครับถึงเวลาประกาศผลแล้วนะครับและผู้ชนะนะฮะ โอ้ยกลับมาครับสู่ไทยไฟท์ครับเชียร์พี่ไมค์กันแล้วนะฮะตอนนี้โอ้โหไม่ทันกล้องไม่ทันกล้องแน่นอนเพื่อให้ความส
เราอาจจะไปทั้งเลี้ยวผูเราจะไปแมนเชสเตอร์กันต่อนะฮะเปิดมวยนะฮะมวยยิมต่างๆนะฮะไปหลายๆที่เลยนะครับโดยนะครับคุณสมฤทธิ์ธนการจนะสุดนะครับประธานสโมสรออกซฟอร์ดยูไนเด็ดนะครับและดรนพพรวาทินประธานกรรมการบริหารบริษัทไทยไฟจำกัดจะเปิดยิมมวยไทยไฟให้ทั่วอังกฤษครับโดยจะปักหมุดแห่งแรกที่เมืองออกซฟอร์ดก่อนอย่างที่คุณเป๊กบอกเมื่อสักครู่นี้ครับใช่ครับก็คือ2ท่านนี้นะฮะเขาก็คือมีแนวคิดร่วมกันนะครับ,รบสำหรับเรื่องไทยสปิริตนะฮะอย่างที่ผมบอกไปว่าไทยสปิริตคืออะไรมันคือความเป็นตัวตนของคนไทยที่เป็นเอกลักษณ์ของคนไทยจริงๆเราต้องสื่อไปให้ทั่วโลกได้รับรู้รนะฮะว่ามวยไทยของเราก็คือมวยไทยค่าเชื่อ,อย่างเงี้ยต้องให้ชาวโลกได้รับรู้ว่ามันสะใจขนาดไหนใช่ครับมันคือจิตวิญญาณของคนไทยนั่นเองครับเสียงดังฟังชัดพวกผมเอาตรงอยากไปด้วยครับอยากไปด้วยเราจะได้ไปอยู่บนเวทีในประเทศอังกฤษครับโอ้สุดยอดนะครับไม่ต้องดูบอลก็ได้เพราะมวยไทยนะฮะจะไปมวยโลกอยู่แล้วถูกต้องเลยครับเอาละครับเรามากลับมาเดือดกันต่อนะครับโดยคู่นี้มีการต่อน้ําหนักให้1กิโลกรัมนะครับยอดมวยจากนอร์เวย์ครับขึ้นชกในพิกัดน้ําหนัก71กิโลกรัมครับเจ้าของเข็มขัดแชมป์มวยไทย2เส้นขอเสียงต้อนรับครับไวกิ้งจอมโหดโมฮัมหมัดคอลีโมฮัมหมัดคาลิวไวกิ้งจอมโหดประเทศนอร์เวย์มวยจากนอร์เวย์นะครับแน่นอนไวกิ้งจอมโหดใช่ไหมฮะมาเปิดบัญชีโหดใช่ไหมฮะต่อ1กิโลต่อ1กิโลด้วยได้ <laughs> เราต่อผมต่อให้1กิโลเลยเพราะคนนี้หนังจากเปิดบัญชีมาแล้วค,คนนี้เขาจะมาปิดบัญชีโหดเอง <laughs> เพราะเขาคือแชมป์ไทยไป2023ครับผมรุ่น70กิโลกร,รัมคนล่าสุดนะฮะขอเสียงต้อนรับขุนศึกเมืองพะเยาน้องโอชอฮาพยักน้องโอชอห้าพยักขุนศึกเมืองพะเยาประเทศไทยWe are moving on to our third bout of the evening in the main card of Thai Fight. P. Mai. Of course, we've already had a bonus bout earlier on this evening. We've got a few regular faces now here on Thai Fight. P. Mai, and one of them is the Beast that will be competing right now in a 70 kilogram international super fight. Introducing first in the white corner, Mohamed Khalil. 30 years of age, he was born in Oslo, Norway, standing at 170 centimeters. He has a professional record of 72 fights, 47 victories, 21 losses, and four draws. We've actually seen Mohamed Khalil four or five times, I believe, on Thai fight. He's even competed and fought against Senchai, PTT, Payak Samui, Farlikit, been around the sport a long time and he's still here competing. That is correct and here's his opponent tonight, the very familiar face here on Thai Fight. 
He goes by the name of Nong O Shaha Payak. His real name is Adison Jit Kam Kun. 23 years of age, 174, 7 meters tall from Payao province in the northern part of Thailand. He has a total of 244 fights, 193 victories, 41 losses, and 10 draws. Yeah, so you saw a little teasing promo for Thai Fight Oxford. I don't believe we have got a date set for... Not just yet. I don't, I'm still looking for the location. Yeah. But... Put the shirts made. Yep, that's right. <laughs> the most important thing. Exactly, but Aaron and I still haven't got one yet, so please stop asking us for shirts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, introducing our fourth bout of the evening here on Thai Fight. Pete Mai in the white corner from Norway. Mohamed Khalil. And introducing the competitor in the black corner. He goes by the name of Nong O Shoha Payak. And the referee in charge of this match is Yong Yot Apaiso. Judges ringside, Tawani Ingobon, Siprat Chumsuk, and Somsak Chana Sung Nern. And the president of the judges and referees here in Thai Fight is Dr. Sawang Witi Apitak. I forgot to mention him in the beginning of the show. How dare you? I know. How dare you, sir? All right, here we go. Round one. Of course, Nong O competing around two weeks ago on the big Thai fight in Hua Hin, where he defeated Kevin Pereira via knockout. It's actually a close fight, that one, up until the knockout. That's right, I mean, he really is a headhunter at the moment, isn't he, Nong O? He needs to start attacking more of the body. He's doing better in that department. Yeah. But I think his own oh. tendencies keep coming back. So this fight, in fact, um, Nong O did weigh in at 70 kilos, and Muhammad Khalil weighed in at 71. So there is a weight advantage oh. for the Norwegian. Right. Yeah, one kilogram weight advantage. They do do that sometimes here on Thai fight. To attempt to even the odds. Good Not luck. Normal, of course, for five round stadium fights to see a few pounds being given here or there. For the sake of, like Kevin just said, evening up the match. Oh! Yeah, because when Don't Go, Chahapaya first started here on Thai Fight, I, wouldn't, I don't like to say the word or the phrase one trick pony, but it was all about, like you just said, Kevin, looking head hunting with his left and right hands. Over the years here on Thai Fight, he has started to evolve and doing that, throwing those kicks, being less obvious. Is yeah. it really helping him? I'm not sure it was, because, you know, when he fought in the Wimini Stadium, when he fought in the five round circuit, he used every single offense. Yeah. But then when he came to Thai Fight, he had those kind of wrapped around his hands. All of a sudden, he thought he was a boxer only. Yeah. And we've seen him get knocked down, of course, here on Thai Fight. Yeah, that was in um, Patum Tani, that was, yeah. Good block of the kick there from Muhammad Khalil. As Nong Ho still pushes forward. For all the uh, Muay Thai aficionados in the corner of Muhammad Khalil, we have a legend, Ramba Somdet, trainer of Muhammad Khalil. That's right, Rabba Sobdet has opened a gym in Pattaya. I can't remember how old it is, but he's been running for a few years and he does develop a lot of good local fighters there. Van Rabba, or... That's right. Yep. Yeah, if you haven't seen the highlights of uh, Rabba Sobdet, they're a sight to behold. An amazing Absolutely. fighter. We always talk about how like, we've now entered like a massive entertainment phase in Muay Thai. It's evolved. You do, of course, have the big five round fights, but you know the entertainment shows are exploding here. Imagine Ram Ramba. In this era. Yeah. He was suing to see here as Nongo. Pushing forward towards Mohamed Khalil with just the right thing and grabs a hold of Nongo. Yeah, it's rare that Nongo doesn't push forward. Mohamed right now doing a good job defending against Nongo's attacks. That's his left hook, right high kick there by Nongo. Mohamed Khalil not bringing anything by way of offense. Again, anyway, here in round number one. End of round number one here on Thai Fight. Stay with us.
from the very first run. It's Nongo Shahapiak in the black corner and Mohamed Khalil in the white. And a lot of defending for Mohamed in that very first round. Nongo trying to push forward, trying to connect with a lot of shots. He does at times. And honestly, I mean, he didn't connect with that many shots, but did connect with more shots. Therefore, as I say, Nongo took that first round. Yeah, without a doubt, you can't just sit back and expect to win the round without pushing the pace a little bit, or at least throwing some. But you have seen Mohamed Khalil getting knocked out here on tie fights, so perhaps all he was thinking was about surviving round number one, so then he can do something here in round number two. Let's see if he can against the beast that is Nongo. Yeah, Nongo doing what Nongo does best and push forward. Oh, left up, right kick to the body there by Nongo. Now, if you ask me, it's time that Mohamed Khalil, he needs to start changing yeah, back. Well done there from the Norwegian. Yeah, throwing elbows that time as well. And of course, when you start to throw, you start to leave yourself exposed. Oh, big right hand. Massive right hand there on the counter. And again, here comes Nongo trying to finish the fight. I'll tell you what though, that was a big right hand. Khalil took it rather well. Yeah, it's a huge right hand there. Another left hook there and a right hand by Khalil once again. Oh, big knee to the body. It was a kick. That's right. If you can't attack the head, you attack the body, and hopefully your opponent will lower their guard. And a little swinging with that elbow strike. He obviously, sees an opening there that he can feel he can exploit. Covering up well. Oh, gets a bit of the right hand. Blood flowing from the right eye. Really not another eye injury here. <laughs> I think that's the main topic for tonight. Left up there by Nongo. Ooh, jumping right kick. Yeah, Nongo not as accurate with his shots as he usually is. Stolen quite a bit. Good oh, right hands, good right hands right in a row. Khalil doing the right thing and just stepping backwards momentarily. Good counter there by Muhammad Khalil with that left hand. Another right hand connects for Muhammad Khalil. I like the way that um, Nongo, if he does miss with the hands, it's close range he does that, he throws a knee every single time, something that he's added to his arsenal. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that Nongo has done before. He's going tie fight, but now he's bringing it back once again. But fair to say, he's much more of a powerful fighter than he was in those days. And every time we see him, he's just getting more more well-rounded. Exactly what he needs to be. Again, yeah, Khalil looking for that left hook. Next to it very well though, Khalil. There's that knee once again to the body. Right hand, knocking Khalil back, a left. Kept it right kick there from Nongo. Khalil retreating. Feel like he's back in survival mode. Yeah, I feel the same. Nongo though in the previous battle we saw. Oh, big right hand. Swinging right, missing that time by Nongo. Nongo in the previous time we saw him, he looked quite tired. He looked like he wasn't in that good of a shape, but today he actually looks really good. As for the speed though, I mean, he could use a little bit of work. Good knee to the midsection yeah, there from Nongo. Once again. Another big round for Nongo here on a tight fight. Stay with us. The third and final round up next.
second round. The round started off quite equally, really. I mean, both of them tried to exchange shots against each other. They were trading blows, trading elbows and punches. But as the fight went on, as the round went on, Dong Ho really took the advantage yeah. of going forward and kept being so accurate with all his shots. And Muhammad just seemed to have shut down for just a moment. Yeah, I feel like that Nongo's power was just starting to wear down Muhammad Khalil in that round. Of course, he connected with a huge right hand that has opened up a cut just in the bridge of the eye, on the right eye there of Muhammad Khalil. But he has made it to the third round. Big round coming up. I'm sure Nongo would like the stoppage, of course, as he always goes for it here on time. Getting to the third and final round, making it to a decision is a victory in itself. But how big would it be, I mean, if Mohammed could score oh, a knockout here? Of course, of course. Nice left kick there by the Norwegian. Left hook by Nongo. Big shots fired. Oh, both looking for that left hook. Khalil looking for a right hand. A little bit apprehensive though, the way that he throws it. He's not throwing his whole body behind it. Showing respect, of course, to Nongo, understandably. Lock of a kick there by Khalil and a big left jab there and a big left hand there from Nongo taking Mohamed Khalil off his feet. You see Mohamed Khalil now staggering back to his feet, but he does get back to his feet. Nongo now surely going to look to go in for the kill. Yeah, but at the same time, you want to try to get that impressive knockout. And then again, you don't want to trade blows with Nongo. I mean, how do you how do you go, go forward with that? Yeah. Very true. Yep. Khalil doing the right thing. Grabbing a hold. Trying to regain that composure. Kick to the body there from Nong. Oh, another oh, kick to the body. And that hurt again. him. Hamid says bring it. Well, I thought it hurt him. <laughs> Once again, the bulldozer that is Nong. Go. Trying to take out Mohammed Khalil. And yeah, now Khalil just taking the fight to Nong. Oh, making this a brawl. Exactly what he's going to do, throw everything he's got at Nongo. At the moment, he's got nothing to lose. Big shots to the body there. Good kick by Nongo, just missing. Nice elbow through the guard there by Khalil. Another swinging right hand there from Nongo, but Khalil covering up. Quite impressed with his defensive work, to be honest. Yeah, he's done well in that department. Yeah, it's not completely different when you're fighting as opposed to gloves. the body by Khalil. Stalemate right now. Oh, nice left hand. Khalil moving out the way of the right. Deep big kicks there, holding onto the ropes, which of course you cannot do. Yeah, the referee just telling Khalil that is completely illegal, but it was fun to watch, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, the crowd enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too right here, to be honest. Oh, big swinging right hand there, and a left. And don't go in there holding onto the ropes. I was just about to say. Well, eye for an eye, as they say. Don't mention eyes. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like Khalil's going to hold on here. We are going to go to the judges. Well taking a foot off the gas. Unless Nongo can have one last pressure put. Good heart being shown here by Khalil though. Yeah, fantastic heart. Yeah, it took a lot of damage, not only to the head, to the body as well, throughout all three rounds. Oh, and here he comes. Watch this slipping. And there it is, end of the third and final round. Oh. Khalil several celebrated the fact that he made it that far. And I understand why. I think sometimes when you reach the third and final round and then you realize, okay, look, if I'm not gonna knock this guy out, I'm just gonna have fun in there. And I think that's, that's what it was. Of that fight. Good left hook there. Oh, that was like the end of Rocky 3. But unfortunately, Mohamed Khalil went down to the canvas on taking the eight count. But he did get back to his feet and was able to finish the fight. Yeah, I must say it was a very interesting bout. And one of the Uncle. things I was impressed with Khalil was the fact that he was moving around the ring so well. It was making it difficult, just like that. Yeah, Four. carrying the right hand. And this, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you call that kick. Something from Street Fighter, I think. 
Oh! 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 I'm not sure if he's impressed <laughs> or not. Oh, that is it. You're gonna have to do more than uh, triple non goals today. Put an out in the cap. Dagger! The winner is Nong O Shaw Ha Bayak from Thailand! Woo! And I have a boy here, Sanok in the cool and have a book. Yeah, I love it. แน่นอนว่าแน่คือความเป็นไทยนะครับที่อยู่กันแต่ว่าความสนุกยังตอนนี้ครับคุณจิ๊บใช่เลยครับเดี๋ยวกลับมาพบกันอีกสักครู่เ
24 years of age from Tehran in Iran. Standing at 181 centimeters, he has a professional record of 59 fights, 45 victories, 14 losses, zero draws. He weighed in at 77 kilograms. So this is the second Iranian of three Iranians here tonight on Thai fight. Fortunately, Bashir Mezriavi lost by a first round knockout against Busan. And here's his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Dengdung Tom Nakhon Sawan. His real name is Egapan Sombunsap. 31 years of age, 187 meters tall from Nakhon Sawan province. He has a total of 118 fights, 100 victories, 14 losses, and 4 draws. He's a multiple time Kachuk champion here on Thai Fight. And he was a Weber champion, and he was also the King's Cup champion. Can't remember how long that was, but yes, he was a King's Cup champion. I remember watching it. So yeah, Deng Nung, he actually came on Thai Fight in the scene in 2012. That was his debut fight, and he actually lost that fight in Paris. Then few years he went back into the stadiums. Was, was, was that his debut fight? Yeah, in 2012. All right. Then he went back to the stadiums and then he came back, returned to Thai fight in 2015. Yeah, at one point he was called Super X. Super I believe. X. That's, that's right, right, yeah. He was never called Super X in Thai. Oh, it might have been in 2012 though, potentially. Anyway, 45 fights he's had in Thai fight over the span of over tw what, 12 years now. 43 victories. 35 knockouts. Kevin, would you like to guess how many of those knockouts were in the very first round? I would 35 guess... 35. 35? I would guess about 27. <laughs> Spot on! Really? 27 <laughs> knockouts okay. in round number one. That's incredible. <laughs> that was a very impressive guess. See the gentleman there taking the Moncon off for Deng Nung is Mr. Brewitt. Jaru Rajakun, or... Also known as Puyai Heng from Sisaket Province. I mean, he was the reason why we went to Sisaket Province. I believe it was uh, two years ago. Oh, excellent. Or a year or two Thank ago. Very much to him. Yep, very good show. I mean, the fans there, I have to say, <laughs> they were diehard Thai Fight fans. There's no doubt about it. Wow, so you can see just how incredible the Thai Fight roster is at the moment. Peng Nung here in bout number four. A fighter who's, of course, headline Thai Fight. So one kilogram weight advantage for Abu Fazl, Ali Sadet. Yeah, let's see if we'll help Teng Nung now on the back foot. He usually comes out swinging. He does. Riding a 28-5 winning streak, 23 knockouts. That time, left low kick there by Teng Nung, of course, 31 years of age now. Oh, big right hand there by Abu Fazl. Yeah, we see Teng Nung fight like this actually a couple of times, but he likes to lure his opponents. Thinks yes. He doesn't have much power, not much speed, and out of nowhere, that left hand yeah. just comes guns blazing. Abel Basel backing up Teng Nung right now. Oh! Oh, oh my, my goodness! Shorty! Wow. wow! I didn't even see what actually connected, but it must have been a right hand! A shock is on the part! Teng Nung! Oh my like goodness! My goodness, where did that come from? Machine gun hand there by Abu Fasil Goli Sadeh. Degnuk in a lot of problems right now. I am in shock. I did not expect this to happen to Degnuk at all. And once again, beginning of the, end. the Maria punches Degnuk in a lot of trouble. Oh my goodness. Talking about shocks. This is unbelievable. Degnuk on wobbly legs. Left kick to the body by Degnuk. Right hand. And again, how is he standing? Referee, you gotta start the count. Surely that was worthy of count number two. Degnuk taking so much punishment. Big left kick there by Degnuk. And another left kick by Abu Faz. Big problems here by Degnuk. Degnuk in a lot of trouble. We did not expect this whatsoever, Aaron. But Abu Faz, you gotta give it to him. Really taking the fight to Degnuk. Unbelievable. Teng Nung needs the end of the round right now. Desperately. Oh, big left knee by Teng Nung. No. Oh. No. No. Shoulder. A shoulder. There's a shoulder injury, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. No. Oh, my no. goodness. Oh, no. And Teng Nung pulls this one out of the way. Oh, unbelievable. I am lost for words, Aaron. I am lost for words. 
he looked like he look, was look at them he has no idea what's going on he doesn't know where he is how did he not go down from those strikes how were his legs holding me holding him up it was unreal you know what i was criticizing the referee oh, for so not letting the fight continue yeah. but but now i'm crediting the referee for letting the fight continue who would have thought that that would have happened i cannot believe abu fazl so unlucky he was doing everything right in that round and then all of a sudden i'm assuming it's a dislocated shoulder i'll tell you what aaron that's the closest i've seen oh. anybody to knocking out technic oh without a doubt it's pointing to his eye what what let's have a look at what happened this is what i didn't actually see what connected with this oh right hand just behind the ear completely Balance just took from under him. There. Didn't look like he connected, but it was enough to throw Tegna completely off balance. His brain rattling in his head. And let's go take a look at and the then, second one. Abel Basel doing exactly what he needs to do. Take it to the tie. Big right hands, left hands coming in. And once again, how on earth is he staying on his feet? What is holding him up? I'm surprised as well. I mean, I thought that was going to be it. That was a big left hand there by Dengnu, doing everything in his power to try and fight back. Not even looking into the eyes of Abel Fazl. I don't even think he knows where he is or where he was at the moment. And then, as Abel Fazl took down, I think his shoulder might have popped out already. And then a massive left knee. Chaos. Chaos. Yeah, it definitely was right there. Yeah. Right there when he tried to swing for the hook. That's where the elbow got dislocated. And then a left knee to the body, but yeah, I think was it I think the shoulder that had popped out. Gotta be. So unfortunately. Oh no. We've got to see a rematch. We have to see a rematch. Abel Fazo, Goli Sadeh, so unlucky. Fought so well. Showed amazing technique, power, bringing it to Dengnung. But Dengnung. ชื่อนะครับท่านผู้ชมครับไทยไฟพี่บายเขาก้ามออกมาจากประตูนรกครับครับผมโอ้โหนรกยังไม่ต้อนรับเต็งหนึ่งนะเขายังนั่งดูอ
นักรบแดนใต้เขี้ยวเพชรเกียรติไพศูเขี้ยวเพชรเกียรติไพศูนนักรบแดนใต้ประเทศไทยไฟฟิตส์ดาวน์เฮียออนไทยไฟพีไม้วิดไฟส์สติลจะเล่นเพราะว่าเรามีโบนัสบอทเมื่อวานนี้และเราได้เห็นสองการแข่งที่น่าประทับใจมากๆในรายการนี้ตอนนี้เราได้เห็นสองการแข่งที่น่าประทับใจมากๆในรายการนี้ตอนนี้เราได้เห็นสองการแข่งที่น่าประทับใจมากๆในรายการนี้ตอนนี้เราได้เห็นสองการแข่งที่น่าประทับใจมากๆในรายการนี้ตอนนี้เราได้เห็นสองการแข่งที่น่าประทับใจมากๆในรายการนี้ตอนนี้เราได้เห็นสองการแข่งที่น่า Introducing first for this super fight at 61 kilograms, Thailand versus Morocco in the white corner from Morocco, Mohamed Taufik, known as the Moroccan Wolf, just 19 years of age. He is from Ait Malul in Morocco, stands at 177 centimeters, and has a professional record of 33 fights, 25 victories, eight losses, zero draws. And here is his opponent, the Thai Fight League champion at 61 kilograms. Goes by the name of Kiel Pit, Get Prai Son. His real name is Tinan Chai Si Prang. 22 years of age, 177 meters tall from Drang province in the southern part of Thailand. His total of 77 fights, 65 victories, 10 losses and 2 draws. Gotta say, Kiel Pit, he looked impressive in his last fight. Yeah, absolutely, against uh, Bastian Angulo, which of course was his debut on the big Thai fight in Hua Hin. And he was actually dropped in round number one. It wasn't counted, but he definitely got caught. But after that, it was all Kiopet. And I don't want to hype him up too much, but I think I'm about to when <laughs> I call him Baby Senchai because his skill set is just on another level. And he's, he does remind me the way that he does the jumping switch kicks. That he, he doesn't. He has that tempo about him as well that Sanchai brings. That's right. It's just different. Really fast kicks. Of course, the IQ not there. No, <laughs> not, not yet. But not even it, close. <laughs> of course, but it will come. I'm sure. At just 22 years of age already, like Kevin was talking about, the Thai Fight League tournament champion at 61 kilograms. But yeah, he took out Bastian Angulo in spectacular fashion, of course, in Hua Hin, and uh, barely lost a round in Thai Fight League on his way to that tournament victory. Always impressive. Yeah, one thing I really like about him is that he has such fast paced kicks and he can destroy anyone's ribs Absolutely. with those kicks. Of course, keeping the tradition alive here on Thai Fight with the Y crew before every bout. And of course, we've got the live band playing the music who we do share a bus with. <laughs> On the way home. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, for all those watching and thinking when my favorite fighters come out. So we've got Vero next. After that, we've got PTT. Then in the Colt main event, a fight that all the fans who are used to watching Thai Fight League will be familiar with. It's the Thai Fight League tournament final at 71 kilograms. The fan favorite, Sik Kitty Sak, Sik Chang Pao. We'll be taking on the monster known as Warajak Lek, Kiat Chat Chai. And then in the main event tonight, in Thai Fight Pimai, 
the return after only, what, two weeks? That's right. Of Sanchai, PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. Well, it's been, it's been more than 21 days, so three, three weeks, yes. Three weeks. According to the rules of Muay Thai here in Thailand. If you get knocked out, you need to rest for 30 days. If you win or by decision or lose by decision, you take a rest for 21 days. Of course, that's if you don't have an injury. But I think, uh, fair to say, Lion probably does have an injury, yes, from his previous <laughs> match. You love seeing traditional Y crew just like this. Yo, Pet set the tone for this one. And I'm sure the crowd will, and the viewers watching around the world on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel will appreciate that. Of course, with all the knockouts, <laughs> Kiopet gets the privilege to do a log Y crew. All right, here we go. A super fight at 61 kilograms. Of course, it's Card Chuk in the white corner from Morocco, Mohamed Taufik. And in the black corner, it's Kiopet Git Pry Son. And the referee in charge for this match is Bajak Ngaungam. Judge ringside, Phuket Pram, Payun, Siprat, Jumsuk, and Yong Yut, Apaiso. Seven centimeter height advantage for Mohamed Taufik. Of course, the experience goes to the Thai fighter, Kiopet. Yeah, Taufik, I mean, he's been in town for a while. Of course, not as long as some of the other people we've seen on the card here today, but he's doing quite a good job. Seen him have victories in Rajanandan and in Lumpini. Already testing the waters with that right high kick. Very tall in his way. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a jumping front kick there by Kiopet. Not only is he tall for his weight, but he knows how to use his size. Yeah. And of course, I think just 19 years of age, Kiopet 22. Wouldn't surprise me if we see this rivalry continue for years to come. Oh yeah. Potentially heading straight to the top. Alpha pick very good as we said, using of using his size to his advantage. When he does get close, he likes to clinch up, likes to throw his opponents around. Tempted to throw that knee. Yeah, looking for the old elbow strike as well. Kill pit at the moment think about re-strategizing every time he goes for a kick. Something comes right back at Adam. Oh, tempting question mark kick, which he uh, connected with. Last fight doesn't happen this time. One he shot there for Taufik. Taufik now just losing his balance. But it was never a surprise. We always thought that Taufik was going to be the aggressor moving forward. Oh, of course. And now he's trying to wrestle Kill Pit to the ground. Letting him know he's there. Yeah, he certainly is. I mean, the size helps. Good left hook there from Kill Pit and now more clinching from Taufik. The run so far from Taufik, straight into your pit. Left kick, sorry, right kick to the body there by the very tall Moroccan. Game with those left kick, good team there by Taufik. Take down by Kiopet. Yeah, Taufik attempting to use that aggression, but you know, sometimes when you do get aggressive, you lose your head a little bit. I think that's what happened with Taufik just now. Oh, good knees to the midsection again by the Moroccan. Yeah. Using his height well, and there's a cut under the eye, a big cut, I believe. But over to in on that of Kiopet to the left eye. Yeah, there's blood, you can see it on his ropes. Yeah, it's been a difficult round for Kiopet so far. Oh, big back hand! See that? Sometimes that can happen when fighters start to see their own blood. Another elbow through the guard, big right elbow of his own, right Kiopet. He's decided to turn this into a brawl, and there you can see that cut. Oh, round number one here on Thai Fight.
that can run is Kill Kit. Kill Pet, get Pais on in the black corner. Mohamed Taufik from Morocco in the white. And what a good round for Mohamed Taufik, really using his size to his strengths. But it's not the first time we've seen it. I mean, we see it time and time again. You and Rajan and me and Lumpini. Yeah. And things are really going well for him. But then towards the end of that round, I'm not saying that, and that's the cut, that's the elbow that she cut. Kill Pet, by the way, straight elbow, straight to the chin, or to the cheek, excuse me. I think he might have actually been cut before that. I'm not actually sure where it did occur. But either when he saw his blood, then he started to attack. Kill Pet, oh, that's nasty. I was getting to that. Ooh. But Kill Pet, he took his time to get started for the last bout. So, the same thing might happen in this bout as well. Really like this matchup. Yeah, but so far, things are going so well for Mohamed Taufik. I think we're going to see a different fighter now in Kill Pet. Doesn't look like he's wanting to back up. He's going to take it to Mohamed Taufik, which of course could play into the hands of the Moroccan fighter. Good left and right hands there. As the elbows fly once again by the Moroccan fighter. That's right, Kill Pet now not taking a step back. I mean, he knew in that oh, first round. A, what's, what's the issue? There's a cut somewhere. There's a cut on Mohamed? Yes. That is right. It's raining blood all over his chest. Uh, I wonder how bad it really is. Can we get a camera on there? Yeah, we need to get a camera. Now Taufik says there's nothing wrong with him. The doctor agrees. Well, we can't see it, so we're going to assume it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, doctor definitely saw it, though. Yo, Pet, bringing the heat now in round number two. Much more aggression being shown here by the tie. Yeah, and like we said, a very different oh, kill, Pet. Right hand. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. Oh, another big right hand. Yo, Pet, Woo! where did this come from? You can do it all. Are we going to stop the fight? There's oh, another no. cut. There is another cut, I'm ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure it's another cut. Oh, the, the original cut's been open even more. Well, it's more visible now, that's for sure. Doctor having a look once again. What aggression, though, from Kyo Pet. Who would have expected that? Difficult to see when it's... Doctor says okay, therefore we say okay. The crowd are happy. And I'm happy as well. <laughs> Loving this match so far. Got to the body there. Elbow war here on tight fight. Left kick there. Better by Mohammed. Using that range that we saw in round number one. And Kill Pet still moving forward, not taking a step back at all in this round. Unlike the first round, and it's working so well for him. Boxing Big body shots. Another body shot there for Kill Pet. Shots to the head. Incredible. Taking it to Mohamed Taufik. How is he able to stay on his feet? I had no idea Kill Pet could fight like this. He seems like a man possessed right now. Right hand, another right hand there from Kill Pet. What a war this is. Oh my word. Unbelievable war and a great oh. matchup. You know, first round we saw Kill Pet. He more cautious and he got cut. In the second round he thought, well, let's go for it. He bit down on his gum shield. Kill Pet did the right thing. He went back in the first round and he lost. He definitely lost a my official score card. But now he's going forward and he's doing all the right things. And I believe he's winning this round. There's no oh, doubt about it. I love that left hook to the body. Oh, another big right elbow to the head by Kyo Pet. Deep there, once again to the body of Mohamed Taufik. Going down to the body, hurting. Taufik with body strikes. Taufik now in the corner. Trying to get out of that deadly situation. Good elbow there for Kyo Pet once again. Right in the corner where we are. What a fight here on Tie Fight, the third round. Up next.
take a look at that second round. I mean, oh. what a round it was. Kill Pit on my official scorecard, as I said, lost in the first. And now in the second, he knew he couldn't move back anymore, and he decided to go forward and dish out a lot of punishments. I mean, it was twice in that round where the doctors actually had to check Mohamed Taufik to see if the cuts were okay for him to continue. Oh, I was pinning back over there. I was actually comparing him to Sanchai before the fight began, but in that round two, more of a Sayok yeah. type but of approach, and I'll tell you what, it worked for him. He's got a little bit of everybody from Kai <laughs> fighting him. In the first round, he was more of a kitty sack. <laughs> Beginning of the second round, came out as kitty sack does. Well, that leads me on to, don't forget, in the co-main event, the Thai Fight 71. Or a dark leg. In the meantime, what a war it has been between two young guns here on Thai Fight. All right, here we go, round three. You calling it one apiece? Yep, I'm calling it one apiece. Big high kick there from Mohamed Taufik, almost taking Gilpin off balance. Gilpin now though, he needs to start moving forward if he wants to win. The same can be said from Mohamed Taufik. the body. Gilpin backing up. Not sure if that's smart or not. We want to see more of what we saw in round number two. Big kick to the body there from Kilpin. You don't want to exchange kicks with Kilpin. He's got those fast kicks. And they're just so accurate and so powerful. But in terms of leg length, Mohamed Taufik, so much taller. Jump. And he connects with the head. <laughs> that's what you said, that, that's where yeah. the inner Sancha is yeah. from. Right hand connects there for Kilpin. Yeah, a lot more calm yeah. from Kilpin, but a lot like, more accurate. I feel like both these fighters have now come out in the third. And they know that if they win this round, they win the fight. So it's one of those things where they just don't want to make a mistake. That's why we've got an edgy third round now. Yeah, we've got an extremely edgy first round. Big head kick there from Kilpin. Goldfix trying to go for that low kick. Don't think he connected very well though. Some people in the chat think that Kilpin is actually two up. Think for that. Any scope? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I thought Mohamed Taufik did enough in the first round to go ahead, but east of the road. We're not judges, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, beautiful delayed right high kick there by Kilpin. There's Very one thing clever. for sure. There's Very one thing for sure. Taufik needs to start moving forward yes. now. He needs to start attacking now. He can't wait. Yeah, he's down in round number three here. Yeah, he continues it this way. Look at the judges score in favor of him. Taufik now going to the clinch. All caught up in the ropes. Referee has no choice but to separate them. Said this has the potential to be a rivalry that could last many years. Stand by that as well, these two. Remember, 19 and 22 years of age. Yeah, I can see that being a thing as well. Fantastic young fighters. Hot prospects. Now, moving forward, the man from Drug. Oh, good left step indeed there. Right kick to the body by Kiopet. Swinging right hand, Kiopet grabs a hold. Ooh, it's close. It is very close, but I think Kiopet has done enough so far in this round. We'll have to see. Yeah, I feel like the most significant strikes have come from the Thai fighter. Another right kick by Kiopet. Yeah, we thought we'd see another aggressive oh, yeah, heel pet. Absolutely did. And he decided to play it safe, but I still believe it worked out for him. Yeah, whole fight is showing respect. Maybe far too much respect in round number three, but either way, tremendous second round. Round of the night so far. Uh, although that Tengnung first round was pretty incredible. <laughs> but yeah, great fight nonetheless by two fantastic fighters. We will go to the judges scorecard for I believe the first time. Let's have a look at the highlights. Kiopet reaching. Difficult against such a tall fighter. And props to Mohamed Taufik. He knows how to use that height, which a lot of fighters don't know how to do. That was smart. That was tricky by Kiopet. Yeah, Kiopet, extremely tricky. 
And I like how he can adapt his style to any opponent he yeah. takes on. All right. Let's get the official decision and then Vero is next up. Here we go. ตัวจริงกันทั้งคู่สำหรับลุ้นไฮไฟคาดเชื่องสังวินเลือกตัวจริงนะฮะเลือดสาดกันเลยนะครับเสียเวลาประกาศผู้ชนะครับลัดดับเนอร์สเคียวพันเกียรติไพรโซนใช่โอ้โหต้องอย่างนี้ครับมวยมันมาจากไฮไฟนะฮะมีดูลีลานะครับแตกเป็นแตกกันไปเลยฮะเอาละครับนี่คือความมันของมวยค่าเชื่อนะครับอย่างไทไฟนะครับยังมาสะใจต่อแน่นอนในตอนนี้พักสักครู่ครับมาลุยกันต่อนะฮะคู่ต่อไปเอาแบบมันมันให้เลยคู่นี้ทำทำไมถึงมันถ้ามันมีเงินอัดฉีดมันจะมาขึ้นเรามีรางวัลอัดฉีด 15,000 บาทนะครับ,รบให้กับคู่ต่อไปนะครับผู้ชนะเนี่ยจะได้รับรางวัลนะฮะจากดรวรุษวรรณเอี่ยมพิกุลนะครับประธานกิตติมศักดิ์มูลนิธิรุจิรวงศ์ในพระราชูปถัมภ์นะครับแน่นอนนะครับนักมวยหญิงคนแรกนะครับนี่เป็นค,คู่ชกนักมวยผู้หญิงครับได้เลยครับเอาละครับสําหรับนักมวยหญิงจากเมืองบุรีรัมย์ครับครับผมเจ้าของเข็มขัดลุมพินี World Champion Super Champ 2023เชิงมวยของเธอจัดจ้านผ่านมาหลายสังเวียนครับขอเสียงต้อนรับนารีสตรองฟ้าใสอออายุชัยฟ้าใสออยุทชัยนารีตรองประเทศไทยนี่คือนารีซองฟ้าใสออยุทธชัยนะครับครับเอาละครับนักมวยหญิงนะฮะหลายๆคนจะไม่เคยชมเหมือนกันนะฮะว่าเป็นยังไงบอกเลยว่าแข็งแกร่งไม่แพ้นักมวยชายแน่นอนนะฮะถูกต้องสูงยาวเข่าดีด้วยนะครับแต่แน่นอนผู้ที่มาประชันนะฮะบอกเลยว่าต้องจับไปเลยฮะจับเทียบบนหน้าไว้จับตาไว้หรือจะจับตาคนเมื่อกี้ก็ที่อายุ89ที่มาดูตอนพักครึ่งเมื่อกี้นะทำไมฮะโอ้โหบอกว่าห้ามกระพริบตาเพราะคนนี้ไทยไปที่เขาต่อยขึ้นมาบนเวทีนี้สะกดคำว่าแพ้ไม่เป็นไม่เคยแพ้แม้แต่ครั้งเดียวครับ16ครั้งฉะนั้นจับตาดูให้ดีกับสาวแกร่งคนนี้ขอเสียงต้อนรับสาวกลางลุ่มสาลวินเวโรวรุจิรวงเวโรวรุจิระมุกสาวแกลงลุ่มสาลวินประเทศเมียนมา
after that short interview, it is now time for the females to compete here on Thai Fight. It is an international super fight at 54 kilograms. Of course, card chirk rules. It's been an incredible event. Thank you for joining us, or indeed staying with us. 11,000 of you are joining us on the, the live stream. Really appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to the Thai Fight International YouTube channel. If you're new to watching us, we do have a weekly show as well every Sunday from 6 o'clock p.m. Thai time until 8 o'clock called Thai Fight League. And then every occasionally we don't have Thai Fight League and indeed we have these incredible big Thai fights. Introducing first in the white corner, Farsai or Yutachai. 29 years of age from Buriram province here in Thailand. Standing at 165 centimeters. She has a professional record of 55 fights. 38 victories with 15 losses and two draws. Is this correct? A Lumpini world champion. Yeah, that is correct. Champ 2023, of course, Kevin would know as he commentates at Lumpini. Well, it's the, the super champ, world uh, champ? tournament champion. Uh, ah. right. And she's won that twice, I believe. Very in good. two different weight classes. So she's doing very well now. And now introducing her opponent fighting out of the black corner. She is the queen of Kachuk. She goes by the name of Vero Ruchirat Wong. 27 years of age, 164 centimeters tall from Shan State in Myanmar. Has a total of 45 victories, no, 45 matches. 26 victories, two losses and 17 draws. She is a two time Kachuk champion here in Thai fight and is a bronze medalist in the C Games. And something else to add on to this is that these two have actually competed twice before. I thought it was just once before. No, but Kevin it was twice, yeah. corrected me that they have fought left way, which of course is the Burmese martial art where it's roped hands like card shirt. Correct. But you can also headbutt. Well, not, not roped. Not roped though, uh, taped. Taped, yeah. Taped hands. They fought that where Vero got the victory via knockout. And then they actually competed, I believe, in Sisaket. That's correct. But Farsai was going by a different name that time. Fly Far. Fly Far. That's right. So this will be the third time. But And you know, coming here, Kevin and I, was we were discussing this fight. And I was saying that it should be an easy fight for Vero. But you were saying that the way that you that she's been competing, that she's grown, on, right. like you said, on the, on the show that you commentate on every Saturday, I mean, you've been very impressed with the performances. I have been. I mean, she's been the woman to beat on Muay Thai Super Champ or at Lumpini Boxing Stadium because um, she's just so much more technically superior than everybody else there. And that's why she's won two tournaments at Lumpini Stadium. I mean, that was in between the time where she lost to Vero and fought there. And that's, I guess... Oh, lost to Vero and fought here, obviously. Yeah, I yeah. guess that's why they've given her the nod to uh, give it another go against... Vero. But I'll tell you what, there is no way she can exchange punches with Vero. It's just not going to happen. Oh. Needs to use her IQ, try to be that much more technically superior. But of course, Vero, what we know about her, she likes to go forward and dish out punishment. All right. So the only females on this fight card in the white corner from Thailand, Farsai or Yutachai. And in the black corner, it's Vero Vo Ruchirat Wong. And the referee in charge of this match is Si Prag Shumsuk. Judge ringside, Tuani Ingobon, Prachak Ngao Ngam, and Yong Yut Apaiso. You wouldn't believe how many people are actually <laughs> watching this at the moment yeah, here I mean, in Pimai. It's unbelievable. The stadium is stuffed right now, so if you are in Pimai and you're not here, uh, please don't come. <laughs> it is that filled right now. It's ridiculous. Even backstage, people not actually watching the fights, they're just watching the fighters train. Of course, Senchai is there. I'm getting warmed up. But left kick to the midsection there by Farsai. Yeah, I think she's taking your advice. Oh, she was anyway. On the back foot. Not looking to exchange, but of course, Vero with those incredible hands that she possesses and we've seen. I'm surprised I didn't mention the obvious. Yeah. Of course, in the show where she was champion, they used gloves. Yeah. And here we have Kachuk. And that was a difference maker, of course, in the previous two battles they had. Oh, big right hand there by Vero. Last time we saw Vera was indeed three weeks ago in Hua Hin, where she dismantled Nongbu. Yeah, easily. Easily. In the very first round. 
I think she was back in training the next day. That's how. Yeah. That's how well she. Oh, massive right hand there by Duro. Goes training out of Tiger Muay Thai. Where they have phenomenal coaches, not just the boxing, Muay Thai, but boxing and MMA, etc. Yeah, when she went to Tiger, she definitely became more well-rounded in her offense. It was nice to see Vero continue to get better and better after each match. Farsai looking for that left kick. Oh, big right hand though. Nice timing by Farsai, but once again, Vero looks for that right hand to the body. Yeah, I mean, that's how she stopped Farsai the last two times they competed. So she's going for the body, she's going to work for her before. Oh! Left hook there by Vero. Good. Switch around a knee there from Farsai. Yeah, but you definitely see improvements oh, in Farsai's I agree. Uh, match. The only problem is it doesn't matter how much you train it. When you get clipped by Vero yeah. with those rope hands, it's just a huge difference maker. End of round number one here on a tight fight. Highlights from round number one. Around where Vero was doing her best to try and inflict some damage using those hands. Those, that boxing acumen that she possesses against Farsai, but gotta give it to you, Kevin. I think you're on the money. Definitely improvements being shown by Farsai. A lot of improvements. I mean, she is doing the right things by going on the back foot and not exchanging with Vero. However, I still gotta give that oh, first round to Vero. There's no doubt about it. I mean, in terms yeah. of damage, in terms of the shots that connected, Vero was much more superior. But as no you can doubt see about it. Highlights, there was not many shots. We did see some good counter striking. Clearly, the game plan of Farsai, especially with the, those kicks to the body. All right, let's see what happens here in round number two. Starting off with the kick again, Farsai. Oh. Farsai going for two kicks in a row, landing very well for Farsai. Oh, tempted elbow there as Vero moves forward. And a good left knee against the ropes here. Farsai warming up. Yeah, I mean, we said earlier tonight how much we love matches where there's a clash of styles. This is exactly it. Oh, big left kick once again to the body. And then ducking under and delivering another good knee. This is a great game plan. I feel like the uh, Farsai team have been studying Vero. There's that. Oh, good straight right hand and a right high kick by Vero. The high IQ Muay Thai game plan from Farsai seems to be working out for her just fine. But at oh. some point in the fight, she takes way too much punishment. She's got to have oh. to just come back left with a good there. hand. Yeah. Looking good, a left high kick. I've got to assume that will be a tactic at some point throughout this fight of Farsai. To, instead of going to the body with that left kick, go up top and try and surprise Vero. It could be a game plan. I mean, she's gone to the body several times with the kicks. Vero might have her hands out at one point, and that's where she can really utilize her kick to the head. Good movement though by Farsai as they tumble to the ground. And Farsai, Farsai landing on top. Strong, fucking strong. Big hands again coming from Vero. More barrage of attacks, and now Farsai oh. just putting her into the clinch, and that's going to score big for Farsai. Farsai in control of the clinch, and scoring with two great knees. Game of cat and mouse. Farsai having a great round here. Another 
kick for far side. Not sure if it's going to count. Another kick lands for far side right on the money. Big improvements and a three good knees there. Far side enjoying itself. Woo! Round two in the books. Stay with us. The third and final round up next. We almost saw a shock with Deng Nung almost going down. Are we about to see a shock right now? A very close encounter between Vero and Farsai. And you have to say in that second round of which we're seeing the highlights right now, Farsai delivering some beautiful left kicks and being very evasive, frustrating Vero many times. And also good kicks and knees by the time. Look at that, covering up very well. I mean, Again, that this round formidable Burmese fighter. I mean, that first, the beginning of that second round, excuse me, it started very strong. <laughs> Replay did justice to what we actually saw from oh, Farsai. I agree. She took her in the clinch, dished, her, dished out a couple of knees, landed a lot of left kicks. I mean, I, I, I believe that people could score that second round to Farsai. One round apiece, potentially. Miro looking to... Dig a left hand into the body, Farsai looking to just hold tight. And if she can, connect with some knees. Yeah, great shit guard for Farsai. That's very much in Farsai's element, being in the clinch. And she just connects with the knees at such an awkward angle. It does. She had her side to Vero and in fact managed to land the knees in the midsection as well. Vero trying to go for the deep to the face and Farsai tries to do the same thing but it was a fake. Another knee connects to the midsection. More fast side. Another knee. Two knees in a row. Three knees. Four knees there. More fast side to the midsection. Clinch game. Working well here for fast side. Oh, Yuta Chai. Big difference maker. Yeah, but fast side can't afford to lose her composure at this point. Another, Another big left. Oh, big left hook though by Vero. Fast side holding on and once again. Big left knee. And then blocking Vero from attacking. An amazing performance so far as Vero starting to swing. Remember, it's only two minutes for the females per round. That's right. Farsai looking like he's in control. Oh! Foot. Another knee lands right, for Farsai. Left big left knee. Huge scoring left knee there for Farsai. And the corner of Farsai, they're so happy what they're seeing from her so far. And I'm sure the crowd are. Elbow attempt there, but a knee to the midsection once again from Farsai as she's in control with that knee guard. Stopping Vero in her tracks with that knee guard. Closing stages now of round number three. Swing and a miss there from Farsai. And another knee to the midsection there from Farsai as she looks at their corner with a lot of excitement. Her corner is very happy what she's seeing. Aaron, do you think they're oh, right? Oh my goodness. Tactically on point by Farsai or Yuta Chai. We are going to the judges' scorecards, but are you thinking what I'm thinking? That Farsai did enough to take this fight? I don't want to say anything right now, but I mean, that second round could have been scored to Vero as well. That's good point. That third round, in my opinion, though, definitely went to Farsai. I think Vero won Farsai 2 and 3. What do you think watching around the world on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel? you what, take a ball, far side. Many people, myself included, not you Kevin, you knew, oh, yeah. that she was 
not going to last. Like we saw in the previous two bars against Vero, boy, she came up with a game plan for this one and she stuck with it. She's made it and potentially could get a hand raised. Let's find out. It's going to be a close one. Something for the judges to think about. We have a, something we haven't talked about. It could go to a fourth one. It could definitely could go, go to, to a, a fourth one. We keep close. forgetting about that. Ooh. All right, well, let's find out. Very, very intriguing battle here on Tide Fight. ครับครับทางนี้จะเป็นไงอ้าวเชียร์ฝ่ายไหนแล้วฝ่ายขาวของเชียร์เลยแล้วบอลซอยอ้าวฝ่ายหน้าของเชียร์เลยแล้วเว
All right, boys and girls, it's now time for the seventh bout of the evening here on Thai Fight, an international super fight with a one kilogram weight difference. Thailand taking on Brazil. A lot of people in the chat saying that the uh, last result, Vero versus Farsai, was controversial. Well, I honestly thought Farsai did enough, I'm being completely honest. But there you go, difference of opinion. Makes the world go round. All right, in the white corner, we have got George Ferreira. George Nunes Ferreira, just 19 years of age from Ilhus in Brazil. Stands no, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> standing at 177 centimeters. Has a professional record of 47 fights, 35 victories, 12 losses, and zero draws. Actually saw him compete a few weeks ago, where he won his fight by knockout at uh, Rajadam Nern Stadium. You know what? I, I'll tell you what was putting me off. I thought he had a white goatee. <laughs> As in grey. Yeah, yeah, yeah grey <laughs> goatee. But uh, there, there you have it. And in the black corner, he goes by the name of Baratar Abichat Farm, or PDC Abichat Farm. His real name is Wanchalam Pang Daglang. 26 years of age, 178 centimeters tall, from Chonburi province in the eastern part of Thailand. He has a total of 172 fights, 141 victories, 30 losses, and one draw. Multiple time Thai fight tournament champion, and he's a 26 Isuzu Cup tournament champion as well. Yeah, the last time that we saw BTT was three weeks ago, where he took on Thai fight league veteran Chalam Dam. Knocking him out. That pink hair has never looked so glorious. Actually, he needs his roots doing, if I'm being honest. <laughs> pink hair versus white goatee. Oh, Lion. There you go. On All camera. Right. Unfortunately, injured. And dehydrated, apparently. <laughs> it's been a long night. All right. So here we go for the seventh bout of the evening. Good luck. He just uh, spat water <laughs> in his face. Hopefully that'll bring him some luck. Ever the showman, George Ferreira from Brazil in the white corner. In the black corner, it's PTT Apachat Farm. Someone in the crowd just shouted out that uh, Lion probably didn't brush his teeth. So I don't know what's, uh, what's going on with that. Here we go, round number one. Yeah, so I was impressed with the skills of George Ferreira last time I saw him. But whole new ball game when you're fighting someone like PTT. And let's not forget that previous part, he did come in as a last ball yes. replacement as well. Last day replacement. Oh, left high knee up high there by George Ferreira. I think he um, was competing at the amateur games as well at Lumpini Stadium. Not so long ago, a few months ago. So he's been out very active in Feb this February. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people here. Oh, big elbow there by PTT and down goes George Ferreira. A fast start, but it's the power, brutality of PTT knocking the Brazilian down. Yep, fair to say that the old PTT is back, especially after seeing the previous bout. With the right hand attempted there, full fight is swinging. Yeah, we saw him when he competed against Balotesta, he was open. Oh, left and right, and once again, George Ferreira takes the knee. Yeah, it's definitely been a tough contest for the Brazilians so far. PTT doing the same things again and again and again. And you know what they say, Aaron? If not broken, don't fix it. Ah, good right hand there by George Ferreira. Looking for that elbow strike. He was almost from an arm, and a massive right hand floors and stops George Ferreira. An incredible round one by PTT Apichat Farm here on Thai Fight. Yeah, that was very impressive. And Lion there is smiling. Yeah, for anyone who's confused, he wasn't part of George Ferreira's team. Sometimes you get a celebrity or anything to remove the monk on of certain fighters. But yeah. Impressive by PTT. I think he was taking a look, watching the previous fights, watching the wars, and decided that he didn't want any of that. 
and came and did exactly what he needs to do. Take out George Barrera. Three knockdowns in round number one. Yeah, definitely. That's the PC of old. There's no doubt about it. I mean, after the display against Malatesta, I'm sure there's something that told yeah. him, look, I've got to go back to my old ways. That was the first knockdown that elbow through the guard on the top of the head. Look at that combination. Pretending to go upstairs instead, going to the body with the right hand, and then going with a left hook. Beautiful. And then the end shot, straight right. Textbook. Perfection by PTT here on Thai Fight P by Boys and Girls. I cannot wait for this one. Up next, it's the 71 kilogram Thai Fight League Tournament Final as Kitty Sack takes on. Can't wait. <laughs> Ball and ho, I'm pitched from See you in the Yeah, I'm ding Yeah, I'm ding ding. TKO, yok ding, na kap. Oh, ho. Na kap, lang ay mi, mi da pam song. Na boy Thai, na sun jo, na kap. Do see what kang na. Pop ko ja pian si. Man, man. เรียกร้องเขาอย่างดีนะครับแน่นอนครับนี่ผู้ชนะแล้วเนี่ยพักกันสักครู่กลับมากับดันดาไฟกระเชื่อพี่บอยสำหรับคู่ต่อไปนี้ครับเป็นคู่สำคัญของคืนนี้เพราะเป็นคู่ชิงคู่เดียวในคืนนี้ครับจะเป็นการชิงแชมป์ทายไฟมีใครดูทายไฟหลีกบ้างครับถ้าดูนะฮะส่งเสียงกรี๊ดตามสัญญาณนะครับถ่ายไฟลิกสังเวียนเลือดของตัวจริงโอเคโอเคโอเคครับกลับมาในรุ่นพิกัดน้ำหนัก71กิโลกรัมเดี๋ยวเรามาลุ้นกันนะครับนักมวยคนแรกที่จะขึ้นมาทำศึกยอดมวยจากอำเภอขานุวรลักษ์สบุรีจังหวัดกำแพงเพชรขอเสียงต้อนรับขุนศึกชากังราววอลจักเล็กเกียรติชัดชัยวอลจักเล็กเกียรติชัดชัยขุนศึกชาการงราวประเทศไทยคนแรกนะฮะแน่นอนในรุ่น71กิโลนะฮะอย่างที่คุณจิ๊บบอกนะครับ,รบขับสันกันมาแล้วเรียกว่าตัวห้าวเป้งนะสุดท้ายแล้วครับสุดท้ายมาเป็นว่าเป็นดาวรุ่งของไทยไฟก็ว่าได้นะครับชิงชัยกันมาทุกอาทิตย์ฉะนั้นก็ชิงชัยแบบไทยสไตล์ครับวันนี้ดูว่าจะสนุกและมันสะใจขนาดไหนนะครับอีกหนึ่งคนนะครับมาจากมวกเหล็กนสดาบุรีขอเสียงต้อนรับคุณบนพระพุทธบาทกิติศักดิ์สิทธิ์ช่างปกิติศักดิ์สิทธิช่างเปาขุนพลพระพุทธบาทประเทศไทย
I gotta say, Aaron, it feels like we're at the TIE Fight Arena right now, at Beat Active, with the entrance music there. And I know you're a massive fan of the music. Oh, yes. <laughs> How could you not be? All right, boys and girls, and indeed, TIE Fight League lovers, otherwise known, aka the Stretcher Crew. That's it right. is now time for the TIE Fight League 71 kilogram tournament final. Two fighters who have been following over the weeks and months of TIE Fight League. You will have got to have known. And now it's all come down to this in the white corner. Warajak Lek, Kiat Chat Chai. 20 years of age from Kampang Pek province here in Thailand. Standing at 180 centimeters with a professional record of 80 fights, 55 victories, 24 losses, and one draw. And here's his opponent, the Stretcher Crew's champion, Girisak Sitchangpao. Oh. His real name is Girisak Shanok. 27 years of age, 134 centimeters tall, from Saraburi province in the central part of Thailand. His total of 67 fights, 52 victories, and 15 losses. Of course, Skirisak Sitchangpao, he's um, very much so a fan favorite because he's a slow starter. Mm. Then you think, well, he's not going to make it past the first round. <laughs> and added How nowhere. many times have we seen that? So many times. I think he's just went through the tournament <laughs> just like that. Of course, if you haven't seen Kitty Sack before, he has got one of the toughest chins that we have witnessed here on Thai Fight. And not just TIE Fight League. However, not the toughest legs. Ah. We've seen him being counted with that before. That's true. But it does happen. And Warajak Lek is a man who will definitely test that chin. Oh yes, that is exactly why he's in the final. So the referee in charge for this one is Pukit Brampayun. Judge the ringside, Tuan Ingubon, Bajak Ngao Ngam, and Patanam Pong Sapan. The unstoppable force known as Warajaklik versus the movable object known as Kitsak. Thai Fight League tournament final time. 71 kilos. And now we said Kitsak is a slow starter. That's exactly what we're seeing from him right now. Being on the back foot. But we'll see if that will last for long. And during the interval, he did go backstage and uh, see both Kitsak. And indeed Warajak Lek getting ready and I've got to say that Warajak Lek looked... Oh my goodness, what a start oh, by Warajak Lek! Oh my goodness! Wow! Kitty Sack is down and he's bleeding! I was about to say Warajak Lek... Oh no, that could be it. That looks deep, pouring into the eyes. Surely he's going to have to let the doctor take a look at it, no? Yeah. The doctor's, doctor's on the other side. Yeah, the doctor's yeah. right there. No, please Warajak Oh Lek. no! It, it looked deep to me, Kevin. Maybe he started a little bit too slow here. Seems to be the case. And the referee oh, says no, and Warren Chuck oh. is the Thai Fight League 71 kilo tournament champion. Congratulations to Warren Chuck Lek and the team. There's no doubt that we wanted to see more, but you've got to give it to Warren Chuck Lek. Oh, absolutely. He came in with the right tactic. He knew exactly what he needed to do. He knew Kirisak is a slow starter, so he came in fast. Came with a lot of power, a lot of speed, and wanted to finish the fight early, and did just that. Congratulations to Warajak Lek. Listen, I'm going to be completely honest and say, of course, that was anticlimactic. We wanted to see the war that we were predicting, that we thought was going to happen, but take nothing away from that man right there. out here, he sliced and diced Kitty Sack. Let's have a look at how he did it. He followed through with that punch. He might have caught with an elbow, but there he was. Oh, straight away in the blood, immediately flowing down the face of Kitty Sack. What a rise. Thai Fight League has created some absolute monsters for the big Thai fight shows, and it looks like we've just found a new one in Warajat Let Yit Chat Chai. 
I mean, Far if, if he could compete like that every single fight, he would be unstoppable. But like I said, we just wanted to see a little bit more, but I got to take nothing away from Warren Jack Lick. Just sad to see. All right, folks, we'll get the belt wrapped around the waist. We'll confirm that Warren Jack Lick is indeed the Thai Fight League 71 kg champions. Then stay with us. Sechai is up next. ก็ถือว่าผ่านอะไรมาเยอะแยะมากมายจนถึงคู่ชิงและที่สำคัญเขาทำได้นะครับอ้าวประกาศผู้ชนะเลยแล้วกันนะครับขอเสียงนะฮะให้กับผู้ชนะเดอะฟินเนอร์สวัจากเล็กเอียดชัดชัยเปรย์น้ำตาลูกผู้ชายไหลรินออกมาเอาละครับแบกชัยชนะกลับไปให้ชาวกำแพงเพชรนะครับคว้าชัยไม่ได้นะฮะแน่นอนว่าเดี๋ยวเราไปรับเงินรางวัลกันช่วงหน้านะครับโอ้โหน่าภูมิใจแทนจริงนะฮะเดี๋ยวได้นะครับก็ติดตามไทยไฟลีกกันต่อนะฮะมวยมันๆแบบนี้สะใจอย่างแน่นอนนะครับพักกันสักครู่ช่วงหน้าเจอกันครับกลับเข้าสู่ไทยไฟค่าเชือกพิมายครับลำดับต่อไปนี้จะเป็นการมอบเข็มขัดเกียรติยศให้กับแชมป์ชายไฟลิกรุ่น71กิโลกรัมครับและผู้ที่ให้เกียรติมาค่าเข็มขัดท่านเป็นสมาชิกสภาผู้แทนราษฎรจังหวัดนครราชสีมาเขต8ครับขอกราบเรียนเชิญท่านสสนิกรสมกลางให้เกียรติคาดเข็มขัดให้กับวอจากเล็กเกียรติชัดชัยครับผมขอขอบคุณท่านสสนิกรสมกลางเป็นอย่างสูงครับและลำดับต่อไปจะเป็นการมอบเงินรางวัลมูลค่า 200,000 บาทขอกราบเรียนเชิญพลตำรวจเอกศักดาเตชัดเรียงไกรอดีตที่ปรึกษาพิเศษสำนักง,งานตำรวจแห่งชาติให้เกียรติมอบเงินรางวัลให้กับแชมป์ชายไฟลิกรุ่น71กิโลกรัมครับเอาเลยครับต้องขอขอบพระคุณท่านทั้งสองเป็นอย่างสูงครับเรากลับไปพบกับคุณเป๊กได้เลยครับครับผมตอนนี้นะฮะยังไม่ไปลุยต่อกับโคตรมวยที่สารชัยนะครับเพราะตอนนี้เราอยู่กับทั้งสองคนนะครับท่านแรกนะคุณบุญสนองตัญสิทธิ์ครับประธานนักศึกษาหลักสูตรผู้บริหารระดับสูงเพื่อการสร้างชาติ NBA รุ่นที่24นะครับแล้วก็คุณวิศวานีสหพัฒนาประเสริฐนะครับเป็น CEO นักศึกษาหลักสูตรผู้บริหารระดับสูงเพื่อการสร้างชาติ NBA รุ่นที่24เช่นกันซึ่งทั้งสองท่านนะครับก็เป็นประธานร่วมจัดการแข่งขันไทยไปคาดเชือกปลวกแดงนั่นเองเสื้อจัดขึ้นอาทิตย์หน้านะจะครั้งหน้านะครับในวันที่24มีนาคมเดือนหน้าในเองที่ลานซีเคพลาซ่าอำเภอปลวกแดงจังหวัดระยองอ่ะต้องถามก่อนละกันถามที่คุณบุญสนองก่อนละกันครับว่าไทยไปค่าเชือกปลวกแดงตอนนี้ที่กำลังจะเกิดขึ้นเตรียมความพร้อมเนี่ยไปมากน้อยขนาดไหนแล้วครับก็กลับเรียนพี่น้องออประชาชนทั่วประเทศนะครับก่อนอื่นก็ขออนุญาตชื่นชมว่าไทยไฟพี่มาเนี่ยจัดได้ยิ่งใหญ่สมคําเล่าลือจริงๆนะครับ,รบงั้นผมก็คงจะทําจัดไทยฟ้าปวกแดน MBI ค่าเชื่อเนี่ยก็ให้สมความยิ่งใหญ่เหมือนไทยไฟพี่มาเนี่ยครับงั้นวัตถุประสงค์ของเราในการจัดไทยฟ้า NBI ปวกแดงค่าเชื่อเนี่ยเราหาอะไรได้เพื่อสร้างค่ายเยาวชนให้ของเราให้เป็นคนดีคนเก่งคนกล้านะครับงั้นทางจังหวัดระยองนําโดยท่านผู้ว่าจังหวัดระยองท่านไตพบวงไตรัตนะครับและท่านปิยะปิตุเตชะนายกอบจท่านสาธิตปิตุเตชะท่านอดีตรัฐมนตรีท่านวิเชียนแสงวงกิจและกะเหียไตผู้ใหญ่ใจดีที่นําเงินมาร่วมสนับสนุนในงานนี้นะครับงั้นผมก็ขอเชิญชวนชาวจังหวัดทั่วประเทศหรือใกล้เคียงนะครับมาเยี่ยมชมจังหวัดระยองในงานไทยไฟนะครั้งนี้พวกเราเตรียมความพร้อมทุกอย่างไม่ว่าจะเป็นอาหารทะเลผลไม้หรือท่องการท่องเที่ยวโรงแรมของเราเตรียมความพร้อมโดยเฉพาะผลไม้ของเราเรื่องทุเรียนนี่เราไม่เป็นคลองใครนะครับผมมีเตรียมให้ความพร้อมทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างนะครับพร้อมในการจัดการไทยไฟ NBI ค่าเชื่อปกแดงเพื่อหาไรายได้เพื่อช่วยค่ายเยาวชนของจังหวัดระยองและทั่วประเทศครับอ่าแน่นอนนะครับไม่งั้นเดี๋ยวเชิญคุณวิศวานีนะครับ
อีกสักนิดหนึ่งแล้วกันนะฮะเชิญชาวไทยนะครับไปเที่ยวอำเภอปลวกแดงนะฮะจังหวัดระยองนะแล้วก็ชวนไปดูไทยไฟด้วยครับเดนเชิญครับค่ะก่อนอื่นวันนี้นะคะคนชาวพี่มายนี่สุดๆจริงๆค่ะส่วนเอ็นมีเอ่อไทยไฟค่ะที่จะจัดที่ปวกแดงคราวนี้เราได้รับความร่วมมือกับสถาบันการสร้างชาติโดยดรเกียงศักดิ์เจริญวงศักดิ์นะคะท่านมีกุศโลบายในการนำไทยไฟปลวกแดงไปชกวัตถุประสงค์ข้อแรกนะคะก็เพื่อพี่น้องชาวระยองค่ะส่งความสุขได้ดูมวยแบบสุดๆกันมวยที่มีชื่อเสียงในระดับสากลน,นะคะวัตถุประสงค์ที่สองค่ะเพื่อพัฒนาชุมชนเศรษฐกิจ EEC นะคะคงเราเราคงจะต้องยอมรับเลยนะคะว่า EEC เป็นพื้นที่เศรษฐกิจเป้าหมายของรัฐบาลแล้วรัฐบาลเองเนี่ยก็พุ่งลบงบประมาณลงไปในจุดนั้นอย่างมาก mm-hmm. สถาบันการสร้างชาติเองก็พัฒนาผู้บริหารระดับสูงเพื่อลงไปช่วยชุมชนของ EEC เช่นกันและหนึ่งในความภาคภูมิใจค่ะก็คือการพัฒนาเยาวชนเพื่อเป็นคนดีคนเก่งคนกล้าตอนนี้จำนวน 150,000 คนที่สถาบันของเราพัฒนาเรายังไม่หยุดและพัฒนาต่อรายได้ส่วนนี้ค่ะจะนำไปพัฒนาอย่างแน่นอนค่ะโอ้โหยังไงก็ขอบคุณทั้งสองท่านนะที่ร่วมพัฒนาทั้งเยาวชนไทยนะแล้วก็เพื่อประเทศชาติไทยด้วยนะครับขอบคุณทั้งสองท่านนะครับขอบคุณครับครั้งหน้าก็อย่าลืมนะฮะติดตามมาได้24มีนาคมนะฮะอำเภอปลุกแดงจังหวัดระยองกับไทยไฟแน่นอนครับตอนนี้ไปลุยกันต่อกับไทยไฟพี่ใหม่บนเวทีครับผมได้ยินแค่เรื่องทุเรียนก็ต้องไปปลวกแดงเลยนะครับเอาละครับสำหรับคู่สุดท้ายของค่ำคืนนี้จะพบกันในพิกัดน้ำหนัก68กิโลกรัมครับยอดมวยจากอิหร่านขอใช้ความสดบทขยี้ความเก่าครับขอเสียงต้อนรับขาลุยแห่งชาฮินเดสโมฮัมหมัดบาคีโมฮัมหมัดบาคีขาลุยแห่งซาฮินเดสประเทศอิหร่านครับคู่สุดท้ายนี้อยากจะให้ทุกคนนะครับเห็นเป็นขวัญตาแล้วกันเห็นเป็นคุณตาว่าวันนี้เรามาถึงที่พี่มายแล้วถ้าหลายๆคนไม่เคยเห็นว่าโคตรมวยเขาต่อยยังไงนะบนถึงผ้าใบตรงนี้มาถึงตรงนี้แล้วไทยไปจัดให้ครับฉะนั้นก็เสียงต้อนรับต้องมาดังๆเหนือชาวพี่มายโคตรมวยแห่งสยามแสนชัยพีเกแสนชัยมวยชัยเย่แสนชัย PK แสนชัยมวยไทยยิมโคตรมวยแห่งสยามประเทศไทยเสียงอินแคนดังแววแสนชัยมาแล้วละนาออกจากบ้านมาต่อยมวยไม่ได้มาเพราะโชคช่วยแต่เพราะมวยเป็นแรงใจได้รับการฝึกฝนสู้อดทนทั้งกายใจสมญานามว่าแสนชัยคือเด็กไทยหัวใจมวยพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิมพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิมพีเคแสนชัยมวยไทยยิม
ฟังเสียงดินแขนจากดินแดนท้องถิ่นอีสานฝากไว้เป็นตำนานขอฝากไปเป็นตำนานให้เขารู้กันนี่คือมวยไทยดังของไปแดนไกลไม่สิน้นใครได้ยินเขาต้องสยบเมื่อได้พบพบกับมวยไทยโอ้ยละว่าคนงามจังว่าละโอ้ยคนงามอายสิตามใจเจ้าไปนำสิได้บอสิได้บอสิไปถามจอจอRight, boys and girls, the moment that a lot of you have been waiting for. It is now time for the ninth and final fight of the evening. It is the main event, an international super fight at 68 kilograms. Thailand taking on Iran. And this is the only match that is actually gloved. Indeed, it is. So we've just witnessed Wara Jack Lek take home the Thai Fight League 71 kilogram title. Congratulations to him. Main event time, introducing first in the white corner, Mohammed Baji, 21 years of age from Shahin Des in Iran. Standing at 172 centimeters tall, he has a professional record of 61 fights with 47 victories, 14 losses and zero draws. Last time that we saw Mohamed Baji was indeed at Thai Fight League where he defeated the fighter who was actually supposed to be fighting Sanjay here tonight in Joshua from Myanmar. And now introducing the living legend of Muay Thai, Sanjay PK Sanjay Muay Thai Jim. His real name is Subachai Sanpong. 43 years of age, 163 centimeters tall from Mahasalakam province in the northeastern part of Thailand. He has a total of 384 fights, 332 victories, 50 losses, and two draws. He is a multiple-time Thai fight champion. And he's also a multiple-time Lumpini Stadium champion. And he was the Sports Writers Association of Thailand Fight of the Year award winner two times. I believe that the first time that he won that was in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the next time he won is around 2008. Can't remember the year exactly. Please excuse me for that, ladies and gentlemen. But it just shows the longevity exactly. That's exactly. of Sanchez's career. Of course, undefeated since moving to Thai fight. But of course, he does have one draw to his name. Of course, that was against. Alessio Malatesta last year in Italy. Well, there was also that one fight in Pattaya, but that doesn't count. Well, that was not a Thai fight. Yes, that <laughs> wasn't a Thai fight. <laughs> but that's true, yep. So, Mohamed Baji also seen him, sorry, on Thai fight lead twice, like I said, against that Joshua. Fighter from Myanmar, in which he won, but he's also fought a fighter by the name of Kadur Atulia. There is the big boss of the Thai fight. Enjoying the Y crew performance of the living legend now. Who is building, currently building his own gym, his own facility, which is named Sanchai Dina Gym, named after himself and his daughter. Yeah, and for those that uh, don't know, he does not own PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. Yes, <laughs> that's very true. That's uh, something a few people actually believe, but just to Which clear it up. Which is understandable why they would think that, of course. Absolutely. All right. Main event of the evening. An international super fight at 68 kilograms in the white corner from Iran, Mohamed Baji. And in the black corner, it's Sanchai, PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. Thought for a second that was Sayok in his corner, but it wasn't. <laughs> 43 years of age. Now, Sanchai. I keep saying this, I've been saying this for 
almost 10 years. <laughs> but I'm going to continue to say it. It could always be the last time that we see him. You never know. But enjoy him while you can. Exactly. Good work there from Sanchai early on. Very vintage Sanchai. I'm going to wonder how Mohamed Margi is feeling at the moment. It's a big occasion for him. Going for the low kicks early on. Another low kick there for Mohamed Margi. And a face team by Sanchai. Oh. And trying to return with one of his own. Sanchai able to get out of the way of that one. That's good. That's a good sign for Mohamed Margi because sometimes we Opponents of Sanchai give too much respect to Sanchai. Absolutely, of course, Sanchai fought three years ago against a fighter by the name of Adam Kabuk. And I think that Adam did exactly what you were just talking about, Kevin. Gave too much respect, and Mohamed Bargi, I mean, he can't do that. He can't afford to do that. Let's just see how young and hungry this young Iranian is. Takes the body there by Sanchai. Nice attempted right hook coming in by Baji. Jab there from Sanchai, kicks the oh, body. Oh, another right hand attempted by Baji. More of a more serious look on the face now, Sanchai. Yeah, he understands that Baji is not willing to play around with him. Nice low kicks there by the Iranian. And going up high, trying to surprise Sanchai. Whoa! Baji trying to take yeah. Sanchai down, but. I think Sanchai knew every trick in the book there. He will defend himself and land on top. Yeah, and looking for that left hook. Being evaded by Baji. Yeah, so far, it's looking oh, for Baji. Oh, nice low kick. Oh, big left knee to the body there. And a kiss from Sanchai, of course. And a kiss back by Baji. Join himself. Once again, the Iranian. Sanchai oh. trying to go for the team, but a kick to the backside. Oh, looking for an elbow. Yeah, a bit of neck wrestling there by Baji. He's trying to make it difficult for Sanchai. Good to see. Oh, nice right knee. And again to end the round here on Thai Fight. Second round of action for our main event of the evening. Sanchai PK, Sanchai Moita, Jim in the black shorts, and Mohamed Barji from Iran in the white. And there you see the team attempt by Mohamed Barji, not showing any ounce of respect to Sanchai <laughs> whatsoever, which is a mistake I think his past opponents has made. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, toughing it out there within the clinch as well, making it very uncomfortable for Sanchai in round number one. Did Mohamed Barji. And. Uh, just like you said, Kevin, he was giving back what Sanchai was throwing at him for the majority of that round. Even a kiss. <laughs> exactly. In fact, three. <laughs> Why not? So fast. Good work. They say. All right, here we go. Round number two of a scheduled three rounds in the main event. I gotta say, they gotta pick up the pace a little bit more. Block there from Sanchai. Sanchai now going into the clinch and trying oh. to take Baji off his feet, but good balance with the young Iranian. 
wasn't going to go down that easily. And yeah, the corner of Baji now telling them to move forward. Good piece there to the body by Baji. Yeah, what an engine on Baji. Chanchai trying his best to block the knees, but wasn't able to do so. And Baji now back into the clinch, just taking it to Sanchai. Oh, good left knee there by Sanchai. Yeah, big turn in the knee there by Sanchai, scoring him some big points. Baji back into the clinch. That's where he wants to be. He's done well so far and gets taken off his feet and a knee to the midsection uh, once the again. Ring somehow. Yeah, that's why a lot of people call Tanchai the magician. <laughs> but you can see the tactics here of Baji. Utilizing the clear. Oh! Deep there! The low kick though by Sanchai. He replied. And the team to the face by Baji, making Sanchai more and more angrier. Kick to the midsection by Sanchai. We go into the clinch once again. Giving me Sanchai versus uh, versus John Wicha vibes back in Lupini Stadium. Wow. Oh. Left knee there once again. Oh. Not sure what was attempted there by Margie. But I did say he had to do the unexpected against Sanchai. Oh, to walks into the right hand. Gets his left hand there by Sanchai. Hey, what, Margie? I cannot keep turning his back like that. No, it's not going to look good for you to finish no, 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 no. whatsoever. It shows a huge weakness in your attacks. And once again, he does the same thing. And if it works for Sanchai, I mean, he's going to do it again and again. Why not? Good oh, sweep there for Sanchai. Now. He was looking for it all fight. That is so well. That second round, and down he goes again. This time to a team to the body. Sanchai wearing him down. Back into the clinch again. Oh, he's not the same as he was early on. No, not at all. Most flurry of these. Start of this second round was looking great. I don't know if he entered his tank or he was looking a bit tired, but there it is. End of round number two. Sanchai, PK Sanchai, Muay Thai Jim with the black shorts and Mohamed Bargi from Iran with the white shorts and Mohamed Bargi, he started off the round really strong attacking the midsection of Sanchai with his knees but as the fight went on, Sanchai seems to have figured out his clinching tactics, his clinching style and then went in for knees and turns <laughs> of his own and I don't think Sanchai appreciated that team to the face whatsoever no, I think the cameraman appreciated the punch either <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one thing, his balance was amazing. Oh, big right hand there by Senchai. Of course, teat. See the corner now, just listening in. So Mami Baji just telling me. All right. Yeah, I don't know. All right, third and final round of what's been an incredible evening here. I think the last round he was told to just clinch. And, uh, well, well. <laughs> anyways, here we go. Round number three. There you can see left and right hand straight away there. Listening to his corner, Mohamed Baji. Quick kick there from Sanchai to the midsection. Connects very well for the tie. Into the clinch, we go. Once again, Baji looking for her hands, but not finding the range. Yeah, 
Sunshine tends to go for the sweep again. He had two in the previous round. Attempted question mark kick there by Sunshine, but blocked. Oh, right hand. Yeah, just Walked into it. Looked like it stunned him momentarily. Left Tom, elbow there. Tom Borgin is dry, so he's trying to go through. And now Sanchai helping his opponent up to his feet. <laughs> Not sure what that was all about. Oh, taps it left hook. Right kick there. Blocked team. Oh, he's looking tired. Margie is looking tired. I was about to say the exact same thing. He was thing. holding onto the ropes there. Perhaps he tied oh. up in the first round and the second round. Manchai looking at... Oh! Phenomenal team. I was team. about to say, there's a smile on the face of Sanchai. I feel like he's got him right now, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, you're going to love that timing though from Sanchai. Mohamed tried to move forward, and then ended up getting deep. Step to the gas tank. Oh, and again. He's hurt. His body's in pain right now. With the right hook that he walks into. Well, he started so well in Mohamed Baji, but he's just slowing down. You know what we say week in and week out on Thai Fight League, especially. We keep saying why some fighters like to start off slowly. And there's the reason why, because yeah. people do get tired. They're well-conditioned athletes, and we're all human at the end of the day. So it's taking a lot of punishment to the body, it seems. Yeah, that Brigitte's bothering him and he shouldn't get on with it. Yeah, exactly. Wait for the referee to stop the fight. He's holding onto the ropes. Trying to team Sanchai away. Sanchai. Have, no, no cartwheel kick tonight. No, I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think we'll be seeing a cartwheel kick. Oh, okay. We might be coming. <laughs> yeah, he's starting to bounce now, Sanchai. Oh, beautiful low kick. Hurting Bargy. End of the third and final round of your main event here at Thai Fight P5. We've witnessed once again Sanchai, PK Sanchai, Muay Thai Jim here on Thai Fight. The second time this month taking on a much younger opponent. But I feel like he's going to get his hand raised once again. I feel like he did enough in rounds two and three to take it after a great start by Mohamed. Yeah, he did well in the... Then as the fight went on, I mean, it was clearly going Man. to Sanchai. Short arm, right hook, connected to Baji. And another team that floored Baji, as we saw in round number two. Honestly, no one teased better than him. It's incredible. Showing incredible balance as well. So strong, still at the age of 43. There's that well-timed kick to the midsection, which seems to have winded my body just for a moment. All right, boys and girls, let's not forget, we're here every Sunday. The 69 kilogram. Next time, here on Thai Fight. The winner is... Sanchai PK, Sanchai Muay Thai, yeah! Good job, man. Who still loves and still loves Sanchai, man? Okay, man. 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 Okay, หมดเวลารายการแล้วขอบคุณทั้งแขกผู้เกียรติทุกท่านนะครับที่มาสนุกกันนะครับขอบคุณพี่เจมส์ด้วยนะครับและแจ็คขอบคุณมากขอบคุณทุกคนสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ